Good morning and welcome back to the Moda Super Series. It's the final day of action in Group A today, which means by the close of play, we will have our first player through to finals night. Murph, we're going to start with you. We do, of course, have our brand new referee with us this morning as well for a chat. But Murph, just reflecting on what we saw yesterday, is Mark Dubridge, who leads the way at the top of the table, his scoring was phenomenal. Finishing left quite a bit to be desired. It did, yeah. And I think that because Chris Mason ended the day so well after that annoying defeat to Wes Newton at the start of it, I, I kind of still make May's favourite now because it's just two points between them. So that's just the match against each other, basically. Um, and I think he's been the most consistent over the course of the two days. That's what Matthew Edgar says in commentary as well. Um, I would favour him over Mark Dubridge, despite the fact that he's led each day so far. Had that brilliant game, didn't he, with a 7 one eight, he's a record equaling haul in one match. Um, but yeah, there's just been a few frailties in Flash's game that I think Mason can take advantage of. And quite interestingly, I had a cup of tea with Mace when we, f when we were done here yesterday. And he was saying, oh, I could do with, to get my day up and running, I could do with maybe John Walton or Gary Robson at first. I, you know, that's what I really need to settle me. So I had a little look at the fixture list. First up, Mark Dubbridge. And he was, as you'd imagine, when I told him that news. But we'll bring in our brand new referee now for a catch up. Marco, how great has it been to be here and get involved with the Moda Super Series? Yeah, it's amazing. I love the opportunity and it's my first week. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying every minute so far. Absolutely. And being involved with this, we've spoken about, you know, maintaining a certain level of concentration throughout these long days. I know this is only day three for you and you have got the double sessions to come on Thursday and Friday. But how are you finding that side of things when they are such long days? Well, the first day was really, well, it was really difficult because you're not used to it to do so many games in a row. But yesterday, well, I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was a lot better than the day before. So, yeah, hopefully today is a better day than yesterday again. I always think it's one of the most difficult jobs in darts being a referee. What, what is the hardest thing about being a referee? Uh, if the players miscount, <laughs> because you're looking at a certain number, because they miss something and they go for a shot and then they miscount and then they think you're and then you think you're wrong that's difficult and the maths isn't great in this group is it some of the some of the old school thinking where they just yeah. don't not miscount but just don't bother to no, count they, they leave a lot of bogey numbers <laughs> yeah absolutely and you guys know each other don't you from working at lakeside working in wdf events just tell us a little bit about your background for those who are watching who maybe don't know as much about how you got into refereeing um i started around 15 years ago and my first exhibition was well, funny enough, with Gary Robson. So that was my fifth time of refereeing, and I did an exhibition with him. And then, yeah, he gave me the uh, kick of the ass to <laughs> talk with the NDB and talk with the BDO at that time. And then they gave me a chance to do it, and I never left. You just can't shake the man, can you, at <laughs> the moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really good. So now I did nine lake sites, and I did World Masters and WDF Cups, and et cetera. So, yeah, it's really and good. And you were saying yesterday you've actually quit your job now to do this full time. So that's quite a bold move, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is my first week of, uh, well, I wouldn't say professional darts referee, but yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I gave up my job now. So uh, I'm going to do full time this and a lot of other stuff. Yeah, Murphy, he'll learn quite quickly that we don't call ourselves professionals here, no, do no, we? No, we all <laughs> gave up our jobs as well to just come and mess around here yeah, as well, exactly, so yeah, it's fun. Exactly. And just a final word on today's action. You fancy Mace to go all the way and make it through to Group A. Is there anyone you think that could sneak into Group B? Um, well, so Mark Dubridge and Chris Mason, I think, is the fight for the top, despite the fact that Wes Newton's on the same points. Um, I think it's between him and Tony O'Shea for Group B be that third place. I would favour Wes Newton, but Tony O'Shea is one of those players who if he does get in the swing of things, he can kind of railroad a few opponents, he can race through some legs. We haven't really seen that consistent, consistently over the course of the last couple of days, um, but I, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little bit biased. I, I always loved watching him. I love his throw, and if he gets it right, then there's no reason why he can't have one of those days where he wins four, maybe five matches. And Marco, I guess you have to be really impartial here, but you can say, do you agree with Murph or not? Yeah, definitely. Well, well that's the funny thing with the, well, we call them old players. They can hit sometimes 11 dollars in a row and then the next like is a 25. So if they, if it's clicking, then yeah, one, everyone can win four out of five today, I think. Yeah, definitely. What is going to click other than these six players' backs up on this hockey today? We will find out very shortly. We get underway from 9.30. Join us then.
the Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill. Good morning and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. It's the final day of Group A action today, which means by the close of play today, we will have our first player through to finals night. The table is incredibly congested at this stage with 15 games remaining. Let's remind ourselves before we tuck into today's play of the highlights from yesterday's action. Former Premier League star Wes Newton continued to annoy our very own Chris Mason, taking out this 101 checkout on the way to a second successive 4-3 win against the Ace. Yorkshire's John Walton, hampered with a shoulder injury, earned his only victory of the day and second of the week, thanks in part to this sweet Shanghai shot against Tony O'Shea. Walton looks destined though for Group C and a week of early morning starts. Mason has bigger ambitions after he recovered from his opening day defeat by winning four on the bounce. Sparked by this triumph against Gary Robson, another day of averaging over 90 for Mason, who it turns out can walk the walk as well as talk the talk. But as he climbed up the table, silverback O'Shea slid down it, taking just two victories on Tuesday to leave himself two points behind Mason and Newton and four behind league leader Mark Dubridge. It was another up and down day for Robson. A rare success over O'Shea was a highlight for Robbo, who sits in fifth position. But it was indeed Dubridge who earned the plaudits, hitting a record equaling 7-180s in a match. And we can see them all here as he kept hold of top spot with a third of the fixtures left to play. Yeah, some incredible scoring from Mark Dudbridge yesterday, but his finishing, I think it's fair to say, left quite a lot to be desired. 13 180s throughout the course of the day, but he did end the day with the second lowest checkout percentage. That pretty much sums up his day, doesn't it? I think he was, what, 10% in the first game, about 12 in the second. He just couldn't get out, could he? And yes, that was probably what's cost him a little bit on the table. Yes, he looks very strong in the table, but he could have had this wrapped up by now if those doubles were tighter. Do you think for Chris Mason, he'll be feeling today, this is his for the taking? Absolutely. His averages and stats suggest he is the best player on every single department. I literally sat going through the data for the last two days, looking for things I could write in red. Red's important things when I get the red pen out. <laughs> it was all Chris Mason. Every single stat that I could find to find what who's done the best performance or the best this, the best, it's always Chris Mason. Yeah, we can have a look at yesterday's results. He still hasn't got that win over Wes Newton, though, has he? That 4-3 defeat again yesterday. I spoke to him when we were done here yesterday, and he said that's the one that is still grinding on him. That's the one he really, really wants today. It's the one he picked out at the start of the week as well, wasn't it? And there's a reason for that. There's a little story there. He's obviously cost Mason something in the past, and he hasn't got over it yet. We always remember our big defeats to people. Some of the little, little defeats, you sort of bypass those, or the wins, you forget those. But it's those big ones, and it's cost him something along the way, and it's still lagging on him all these years later, and you can see that when they play each other. It has, and I think another interesting point that he made yesterday was both days he's really struggled in that opening game because he's been so nervous he said he's not quite got his preparation right for that opening game of the day how coming into day three do you do you work to rectify that when you've not played in an occasion like this for 12 years well he has for the last two days yeah. now hasn't he and that's the big factor here i think so the first day we didn't know what to expect from him and he didn't know what to expect well at least he told us he didn't know what to expect day two was a different story because he did so well on day one now he's got to Prove that wasn't a fluke. Prove that he's actually playing at that level. And he did. So 
actually all the questions that are being asked, he's got no questions about him now. The question now is, can he win this group? And the answer is yes. Yeah, he's certainly shown that with his performances. We can have a look at the averages for the week. All players, there it is. Chris Mason, top of that leaderboard. The only one averaging in excess of 90 across both days so far. It really is remarkable, isn't it? Well, I said yesterday, you put that average on the challenge door, it actually puts him top of the challenge door rankings, which just shows you how good that is. And when you look at those two, the top two, Mark Dudbridge, Chris Mason, they're, they're miles ahead of everybody else in the field at the moment. And that's why they're the two that are probably going to battle it out for the top spot today. And I guess Tony O'Shea there with the fifth average on that board. I think that sums up, you know, he has shown a lot of good stuff, but there's been a lot that's dragged that right down, hasn't it? His finishing has been poor at times. That's it, the finishing, the slow start in games at times. That's what's pulled that down. But when you look at those averages, there's not a lot between those three. It's like a point or two points. That's just a, a dart here, a dart. That's taking the dart, third dart in hand rather than the first. There's not a lot between them, and them games are going to be tight. But I feel that they're going to be battling out for a Group B position, which is a massive advantage in itself. Yeah, definitely. We can have a look at the league table then with 15 games remaining in Group A. As you can see, Matt just mentioned Tony O'Shea probably battling it out for a place in Group B, you would think, as is Gary Robson. He's certainly not out of it in terms of Group B contention. How do you see that group finishing? Do you think Chris Mason will finish top of that leaderboard? Well, with Mark up and John Walton, he can't get through this. Gary Robson, according to the book, he still can. They've priced him up for doing it, so mathematically it's still possible. But I think the top two are going to fight this out, which is Mark Dubridge and Chris Mason. I think they've been the standout performers on all aspects of the game. I mean, Mark Dubridge, those 180s yesterday, he was joining records, and he's on for records for the weekly records as well in terms of those, if you can keep those going. Chris Mason, though, standout performer by an absolute mile. Do you think it plays any part? I spoke to Chris Mason yesterday and he was saying, what I could really do with tomorrow is maybe John Walton or Gary Robson first up. So I had a look at the schedule and I said, actually, you've got Mark Dudbridge up first. And he went, that's the last thing I needed. Do you think that would play on his mind at all today? Actually, it's probably what he'd really want. As a player, you always want it in your own hands. And if you get those games which you think you should be winning first and you get those points on the board and everyone else is getting the points on the board, you're sort of watching the screen then and you're thinking, I want Dudbridge to get beat somewhere if you've got him last, where actually he's got it in his own hands to get that done himself. And as a dart player, you want it in your own hands and that's the position he's got. Yeah, very good point. We've got Gary Robson, of course, in action first against Wes Newton. Phil Barr's caught up with him before the session got underway. Gary, you've seen many things in darts, but this has taken your breath away here, hasn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. It's uh, definitely the next level. Um makes you want to play it or it really does. It's been been a lot of venues over the world over the years and it's just tremendous. Had you lost some of your spark and love for the game before you'd come back and play it in this then? Um a little bit, yeah. I mean I've I'd come down with these a few times but through the COVID and then I just didn't have any wish to throw darts at all. You know, I think I went nearly a full year without picking a dart up. Excellent stuff from Gary there. Let's get into our first game then. It is Gary Robson against Wes Newton. Chris Murphy, over to you. Thanks, Abby. Good morning, everybody. And what a good day it could be for somebody in this group at the end of the day. Matthew Edgar there saying he thinks it'll be a straight race between Mark Dubridge and Chris Mason who play each other in their opening match. But don't discount Wes Newton. He's in a, a great position himself. Level on points with Mason, and he's got the better of Macy Ace a couple of times. He certainly will be in the hunt, and Gary Robson still harbours outside hopes of catapulting himself up the table. First lag, it's Gary to throw first. Game on. How high can he go? We will find out. Interestingly, when they were looking at the averages for the players, across the first couple of days. The thing that stood out to me, Matt, was that Gary Robson averaged 74 45. for Monday, but then 84 for Tuesday. A huge increase in his performance level yesterday. Massive, yeah. And we saw on day one, didn't we? He started really 18. well and then sort of tailed off as the day went, where yesterday he had a bit more consistency in there. And I think that was sort of the, the story for everyone, really. If we look at the overall day average for... You know, day one was an 81.26. One on the end, 21. Yesterday was an 83.50. And Wes Newton said, didn't he, at the very start of the show, that there's going to be rust on the players. And we, we, two point increase. One on the end, 40. In the average suggests that some of that rust is coming off. And 
If that continues, we should be in for an even better day of darts again today. Yeah, it really does have all 16. the signs of going right to the wire. In fact, the very last match of the day is Wes Newton against Chris Mason. There could be huge significance on that, but plenty of darts to be one flung. One of an end, 20. Between now and then, that one was flung into the treble 20, but caught the two darts in it and leaves Newton on 161 rather than maybe even 101. Chris Mason sort of the... The bread on a table topping sandwich today, isn't he? So he'll end it 45. with a game against West Newton, and he starts with a game against Mark Dudbridge. Yeah, and I think that the key for Chris might actually be making sure he keeps his eye on the ball in the three games in between. Well, that's something he's been very good at so far, and that's why he's got a good leg fall at the moment, because when he's played those players towards the bottom, John Walton, Gary Robson, he's had some big score lines, 4-0 and 4-1 in no 53. games. 53. Wes Newton could get ahead of Mason in the table with victory against Robson here. Mason hoping for a favour, as is Dudbridge before that crucial classic. Dudbridge wins West it. Require 108. He will put four points between himself and Mason, and that would be a difficult lead to get back in four matches. 88. Gary, you require 130. Well, that's a perfectly pitched dart from Gary Robson. Needs the ball to steal the first leg. Yeah, that's been short in the first leg. Gary Robson. Robson robs Newton with a fabulous 130 finish. Second leg is West to throw first. I believe Game on. His first of the week, which is surprising, really, when you look at Gary Robson. Actually, the all-time stats of best finishers in this 51. league. 51. Previous versions of in 2021 phase five, 11 ton plus finishes and set the record for the most in the week. Well, if he carries on the upward trajectory that he's shown over the last couple of days, then he'll win all of his matches today, averaging 94 for the day and finish the group on 18 points. It's possible. One hundred and thirty-seven. He could end up at the top of it. Yeah, still mathematically possible. Still get odds on that. Yes, it's 40 to one. If you fancy that, that's a nice return. 60. Yeah, for those that don't understand gambling, that means if you put a tenner on Gary Robson at 40 to 1, you will lose a tenner. 108. Realistically, as you said with Abby at the top of the show, probably hoping for Group B at best. Yeah, Group B obviously is a 100. big advantage. You get you require evenings, 133. Which is to the dark players, and you get only five players in your group. So. Play a game less. And this three 41. places up for grabs. I mean, Group C in the morning tomorrow. There is only two, and that is of a group of six. If you do your percentages on that, you'd much rather 41. be in Group B. Unless you require 92. Once again, Newton racing out ahead in the leg. He'll go for a five to leave tops. 52. That's where he likes to be, Wes Newton, right at the top. Just ask Paul Nicholson, who suffered a, a brutal defeat at the World Match 30. Play many moons ago when Wes Newton took out a stunning 40. 160 in extra time. Well, he ends up on double 16, where he doesn't like to be. 15. Well, Gary Robson isn't in a position to pick his pocket just yet, but there's no guarantee, based on what we've seen so far from Wes, that this 25 will go. That was alarming miss as that. That almost makes 17. this big number coming quite nervy when you're missing the double by so much. Finds it lovely in the middle. I'd like to find this one in the middle. Yeah, that's game He'll short in the second the corner. Like West Newton. Matter if it's in the middle or the corner. As long as it's in, it's in. And that is a level game. It won't be Third lag, too it's happy. going to throw first. Game on. With the way he's finished so far, misses by big margins and then just snuck one in the corner. Maybe uh, 13. he weren't on first game because as I've come through, Chris Mason is stood at the front like a teacher in a schoolroom in front of the dartboard showing everyone practice games. 85. Everyone sat down listening to him for once and he's like, yeah, go for this, go for that, then you do this and... Well, if you'd been watching in the last few days, you would listen, wouldn't you? You'd, I'll have a bit of that. What is he doing that I'm not? One hundred and thirty-five. Would you trust the guy at the top of the table? 
on the last day when you're fighting it out that his advice isn't going to be counterproductive. <laughs> 58. Maybe makes his back in full swing. Now he's enjoying the games on the hockey. Maybe he's employing the mind games backstage. Who knows what goes on when the cameras aren't 60. rolling here at the Super Series. I can tell you now, practice rooms are full of people giving advice that shouldn't be given just to try and give a little advantage. Your advice here would be 59. switch. And that's what Wes Newton has done. Having locked himself out of the treble for once, Robson is in a leg. And that seems strange because he's actually won a leg, but it was a leg he wasn't in. 140. Fifty-nine. Gary, you require one hundred and fifty-three. Gary Robson's got a bit of time at the back end of it. Maybe a couple of trebles to go dark the double here, but the priority would have been setting it up. Forty-six hasn't made a very good job of. And Wes Newton will be determined to stake his claim to top spot. Gary, you require one hundred and seven. But Robson is going to make it tough for him here. 88 remaining. He was looking for the treble 16, and he'll hunt it down. 43. Unless you require 150. Doesn't choose the Simon Whitlock approach of the three bullseyes. 59. Gary, you require 64. Gary Robson, on one by three, let's make a bit of mess of this. Took him eight darts to have a poke at the double. 48. West, you require 91. Hurt. When it takes you eight to get to a double, your opponent comes down and pinches it off you. Some really wayward darts early in this match. 39. Are we seeing Gary, the final day 16. jitters in Group A when everything's on the line? Well, he can't get any closer without going in. Eight. West, you require 52. Has a little look, has a little check. Or it is not in, Gary. Yeah, that's that is, short in the third leg. That is West a break Newton. of throw. He had 12 darts there from 153. Couldn't see it over the line, and Wes Newton does. Ford lag is West a throw first. A throw and Game on. You said Gary's going to want to make this tough for Wes, and I think that's probably the. The line we can use when we look at these two players so far, they're head-to-head. -head. It's been tough. Both games go in all the way, 4-3. Both players taking one each. So they've found it are going against each other. There's been a, a thorn in the side of Wes Newton. 85. Gary Robson could easily have been cut adrift after day one, couldn't he? His level was not great, but he won his first couple of matches. That put him in a much better position than he might have been going into yesterday including that one against Wes. Following this, John Walton against Tony O'Shea. Again, it just 100. gives Tony that chance to keep himself in the picture as well. And then the big one, perhaps the biggest one of the day, it could prove to be when Chris Mason meets Mark Dubbridge in Game 3, live here on Sporty Stuff TV. Do stay with us until around 2.30 this afternoon when winner of Group 100. A will be crowned and will get a free pass straight to finals night on Saturday. And by the way, if you want to be there, all you've got to do is head to dartshop.tv and 25. apply for tickets. We are in the Portsmouth area. If you can get here on Saturday night, the action starts at 10. And why not? I think we've got to start having a little look here, a closer look at the the throw of Wes Newton. 33. He's these random darts at random angles. And I think that's about his fourth or fifth bounce out he's had now, which might just mean he's not throwing the darts hard enough. But he has a bit of an angle 85. on the dart anyway, which means they're not going to go too deep into the board. They're not going to penetrate the board too much. We'll just keep an eye on that. One hundred and thirty-three. West, you require one hundred and sixteen. Has he played this many hours before for quite some time? You're gonna get too fatigued when you're winning. Yeah, that's game shot. The fourth well one. Well on his way West now. Newton. Three-one lead. 
116 finish. Bounces back from the 130. And Gary Robson hit against him in the opening. Fifth flag leg, so gives Gary the throw first. Finishing on show. Game on. Not often you can get away with the scrappy darts if the neat and tidy ones are all thrown in the same visit. Particularly the last visit. 83. That's what Newton managed to do there. Both players producing ton topping checkouts now in this match. One on the Neither 40. will be particularly happy with the level that they've produced so far, but a, a win for Wes Newton. We'll see him join Mark Dubridge at the top of the table. 41. Talking about throws and actions, though, this is the most broken down I've seen the action of Gary Robson all week. That last visit when he threw that one, it went really low. He 65. Like Spider Man. Well, it's starting to affect Wes Newton. You can see that. You don't have to be a mind reader to know that he's starting to be bothered by the bounce outs. Probably half a leg of darts on the floor 24. now for Wes Newton. There's that Spider-Man release again. 59. I'm going to start the day with concerns because it lags, it carries on. You go back and you try and work on it, so you're actively thinking about the problem. You come back on and you're, you're hoping it's 58. different. And you're worried about it showing itself again. And it can cause you to do things that you wouldn't normally do, like switching. One on an M40. Switch, whereas Newton is persevering and backing himself to put things right. Or bouncing like Gary was there. One it on an M40. Like West Judy Glyne, 97. Up top again. Well, it was 116 to win the last 77. leg. Can't complete the Gary 97 Gary Glyne, 155. But unless Robson can weigh in with a whopper, it will be Newton's points and a, a heavy win 100. which could make a difference come the West end of the day. West Judy 20. Game. Sneaks that one Shot. into the corner. Animates. West Newton needed West a win. Newton. He'd have wanted a big win. He got that. It's a 4-1 victory for Wes Newton. We saw two really good finishes in that. Gary Robson opening with the 130 on the ball. And Wes Newton retaliating later on with a 116 finish. But the big retaliation comes in the scoreline. It's plus three legs for Wes Newton, but most importantly, plus two points. Tony O'Shea will be looking for two points in the next game as he takes on John Walton.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Wes Newton has got his morning off to a flying start with a 4-1 victory over Gary Robson in that opening game of this morning's session. Neither player overly convincing in that one, but Gary Robson, well, he was the only player coming into today's action without a ton-topping checkout in Group A, but he was quick to rectify that this morning. A superb 130 on the ball to nick the first leg. As I said, the standard in general won't please either player in that match, but it was Wes who held his nerve the better. A ton plus checkout of his own to move within one of the match of 116 from him. 40% checkout success in total in that match, and it's Wes who gets that all important two points on the board. Next up, we've got John Walton against Tony O'Shea, and Phil Bars caught up with Tony before this match. We've seen some good darts, some bad darts, some stray darts from you. Whereabouts is your game right now? Um, I, I came back to county darts last year to try and play a bit more and uh, obviously, yeah, when you're at a certain age, you know, you don't feel it as, as, as good as you used to. And uh, But um, I think at times, I think you hit it on the nail, some good, some bad. Um, it's just weird how you can play well in one game and then not so good the next two and then it comes back the fourth game sort of thing. So, yeah, at times I felt really good up there and I've had little spells I've played all right, but... Not enough of them good spells. <laughs> You've seen many things in darts, many evolutions. Is this now the next step and the best thing for the amateur game right now? This is garlic bread of darts, seriously, it's the future. I mean, I believe the plans are just going through the roof for this sort of thing and uh, the guys have got it spot on here. It's, it's brilliant to be... I mean, I watch it as well. The last couple of weeks I've been watching it, I've been you know, really interested and, and just to be here has been brilliant as well. So, yeah, I hope I get another invite in the future because it's, it's quality. Some good, some bad. What will we get in this match? Let's find out in the company of Murph and Matt. Garlic bread. Antonio well, O'Shea saying this is the future of darts below the, the top tier. What will his future hold in this group? Well, this is the start of us finding out. O'Shea looking to follow in the footsteps of Wes Newton with an opening win against one of the players at the bottom of the table. John Walton has just enjoyed a winner day so far this week, and that win yesterday came over Tony O'Shea. So got 120 checkout in it. O'Shea has been below par, averaging less than 80 for the course of the week, but I still believe, Matt, that he is the type of player who could go on a run if that silverback swing finds full flow. What say you? Absolutely. He's... When he gets everything in sync and everything's working for him, he's right up there. We saw like that game with Kevin Painter at the World Seniors this year when it looked like he was just going to get steamrolled, then all of a sudden just started. First lack is John the Throw first. Probably been game on. The most entertaining game on that seniors tour so far, that opening game between Tony O'Shea and Kevin Painter. And we've seen him produce some good stuff normally early on in the mornings. Opened up on day one with a win over Chris Mason with a 90 average, 4-2. And he opened up yesterday with a 4-1 win over Mark Duckbridge. 121. Dutch, the two players that we're looking at being as the favourites to win this group. Yeah, match for anyone on his day. I actually thought he was going to go on and win the, the Masters. 100. The Seniors Masters at Lakeside. And he, he embarked on a good run there. The tournament was eventually won by David Cameron. The Canadian qualifier beating Phil Taylor in the final. But Tony O'Shea got the better of Martin Adams in the quarterfinals in that event, having seen off Lisa Ashton in the last 16. And then just didn't turn up against Taylor at all in the semis. Hard uh, beast to try and slay, isn't he, Phil Taylor, even if it's just in the mind. But you said John Walton's enjoyed 25. two wins this week, one a day. I don't think he's enjoyed too much so far. But already will be enjoying this a lot more than what he's done so far. Just a, because of the 16. tightness already around that 20 section. If you had a heat map on John Walton, it looked like someone's been shooting a paintball gun all over the dartboard. But today, much more compact. 120. John, you require 160. A touch of the Wes Newton issue there for Tony O'Shea. Denied the maximum by a bounce out, and that could be... A little bit of luck for Walton. 41. Hasn't helped Tony, you require though. 135. Should be looking at the ball with the opening dart. 
And there's treble 20 to come back to the ball. 49. John, you require 119. 119 is not a nice finish. Even if you get the treble, it still might leave you on the ball. Sometimes it's better to miss that and get this shot. The treble 20 99. for tops. Tony, you require 86. 54-32. Yeah, that's, that's game shot in the first O'Shea. flag. Tony O'Shea. And leads the match 1-0 with a break to boot as well. Try that again in the next leg. Just say what he needs to do and just... Second leg, it's say Tony it, it, first. The, game the approach we had there. Yeah, well, he came out with a garlic bread catchphrase, didn't he? Maybe that's what it is. Say what you see. Could have also used a cheese 60. cake. Obviously, references to Peter K. Very good comedian. It was Wes Newton, wasn't it? You were talking about earlier in the week with the old Avid dart shirt, which someone kindly tweeted in. Terrible dart shirt. Terrible nickname. 140. Nothing terrible about that from Tony O'Shea. For those of you tuned in on the Moda Super Series 43. YouTube channel early today, you'll have seen a little chat with Marco Meyer, our referee there. Very interesting stuff. If you do get the chance at the end of the session to rewind to the beginning, you can 81. catch that. He said that the most difficult thing as a darts referee is when the players miscount. So make sure you get it right as well. I suppose with that, one on the forty. There's always that awkward moment where they're going to question you, aren't they? And look at you like, "Hey, what are you calling that for? Well, you've got that wrong." I want thirty-two, not forty-two. And then you've got to almost justify the count up again. Forty-five. Like, oh, this, this, and this. In this group, this pair in particular, you don't see many miscounts. They just don't bother to count at all. One hundred. Tony O'Shea in a strong position here. Despite a, a more solid start from Walton in that first leg, the Stockport Slinger seems to be racing 99. away with this. Right, I'll try it again in a moment, Matt. 100. Should have tried it now. 126. Tony, you require 76. Right, I'm going to say 2016 tops. Oh, okay. Okay, Tony. 36. I tried, mate. John, you predict require 60. This one should be a little bit easier to predict. 20. For tops. 20. No score. And that puts him back to 60. Tony, you require 40. So Tony O. Put this one in the tops. Well, 2 and 0 oh on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's game shot and in the second That's exactly what happened. Tony O'Shea. And that bust from John Walton didn't get a second go at the 60, but not the biggest bust we've seen this Third week. Chris like Mason has that honour with that. 130. On. He did get reminded of. One on the own 40. to watch it back. He did, and I actually quite liked what he said because one of the reasons that he was so aggressive and attacked it and ended up pulling it low into the double 60. 45. But because he'd actually started thinking about his averages and thinking, if I hit this, I could be on for a, something really special. Is that something that, that can come into your mind as a player sometimes? You start realising you're playing well and start, as he put it, counting darts? For Chris, I'm not surprised. I was sat here two weeks ago with Chris and we had a week of commentary. And in between, we were chatting about our experiences and time playing. 81. And we spoke about county darts and he used to say at county he would know his average before he even came off because he was so aware of what every dart meant and what the numbers was that One on he'd come 40. off and he'd know before they even told him he'd, be like, he'd tell them what he's got so I'm not surprised he started doing that yesterday 1 on the M40. John, you require 161 Eric Bristow in exhibitions used to tell you where the dart would land as it was in the air Will this land in the ball? One on the end, 31. Well, he hit double 15 in the last shot. We're going for the double 10, so that's quite a nice leave then for John. 
Who knows what to aim for? Yeah, double ten. Ninety-nine. John, you require you thirty. Double ten now. That would just be ironic. Well, he's missed it by a mile, Matt. Twenty-two. Tony, you require 136. That was like one of our referees, Owen Binks, going for a 161 checkout in Southampton at an event last night. More on that later. Just look at this. Oh, one of them, John, you require a treat. Yeah, that's game shot than a bird over the line. John Walton. In 16 darts, we've seen 15 data from John this week. That's been his best so far. 16 darts. Ford like it's Tony the throw first. To the board, which is sort of where he's pitching himself at the moment if he's going to be winning legs. Do get yourself involved in the conversation. 81. We're doing like a bit of interaction here at the Super Series at MSS Darts on Twitter. You can get in touch with me at Chris Murphy 180 as well. And you are. I am at the Edgar 501. 66. I believe that's with two E's actually. I think I put the. The E in Edgar and the E in the as well. I think. It's not like one of those answer smashers of a famous quiz show. It'd just be the G, wouldn't it, if you'd not done that? Yeah, because I think it looks a bit weird with, with the double E, but I've put the double E, and it's not a capital E either. I think it's just a single, single E. Well, that's where to get in touch, and we will 45. read out any interesting or fun tweets that you want to send in. But give us your predictions. Tell us who you think you'll see on Saturday, who you'd like to see on Saturday. 85. Most of the tweets I've been getting so far show a lot of love for Chris Mason, actually. He's earned quite a bit of respect, 81. I think, this week in... This come back to darts. One John Walton starting to earn his stripes in this match. Fifty-eight. John, you require well, seventy-five. Now, you'd see people utilize the ball, wouldn't you, on like a two, three, four to try and lead the one seventy. Because where he's left himself now, he's just guaranteed John six darts. Sixty-nine to go. Sixes. Sixty-three. We'll come back. So it's a nice little setup there for John. Tony O can only set himself up and hope. 85. He's John, you require 12. From John Walton so far. Run you at an 85. And you continue the upwards climb he can. That is in, yeah, John. Yeah, that's game shot than the forward line. He's definitely John in. Walton. I can see it. It's 2-2. Two, two. John Walton's just got the darts Fifth back. flag is John the throw first. Game on. Now on this day, 14 years ago, Tony O'Shea was winning the Welsh Masters. 2008, he beat Mark Barilli in the final. 100. This day has held the, the World Grand Prix final as well in 2019 and 2020. 21. And also a day where Simon Whitlock hit a nine dart finish, taking out the 1 4 4 all on the 18. 41. That was the Championship League of Darts when Whitlock produced perfection. One on an M40. Against Jamie Caven. Is that the Champions League of Darts where they used to play it behind the closed door? Like an environment like this, wasn't it? He's yeah, like Crondon Park. Yeah. And, yeah. In fact, Paul Nicholson, who will be playing tomorrow here, got to the final of that particular run of that tournament. One hundred and eighty. No prizes for guessing who won the tournament. That was Phil Taylor. Really good event, that one. Used to enjoy watching that. 
be an idea. Sixteen, really, wouldn't it? To Tony, you require sixteen. Like that back and call it the championship of darts, and give those players opportunity outside of the top thirty-two. Yeah, that's game uh, short and the fifth flag. So Tony O'Shea. Play in. Yeah, it was it, interesting, wasn't it? You win money per leg, wouldn't you think it was fifty pound or a hundred pound per leg? Six flag. It's Tony to throw first. Game on. It's another leg in the ledger for Tony O'Shea there, who now wants one more to pick up a couple of points that would see him 100. go level in third place with Chris Mason, who takes on Mark Dubridge next. Now, that is a game that could hold an awful lot of significance for this group. 140. So I feel with that game, the practice room, I'm going to start getting the Chris Mason T-shirts on for that one because... Dubridge wins that is going to start causing a gap between him and the rest of the group. Will it be mind the gap or will it be all square between three players at the top of the table with each of them having four games left to play? 60. Say three players at the top of the table, but you'd also have, if Tony O'Shea can complete the job here, Tony O'Shea breathing down your neck on 12. 60. It's been a a good fight from John Walton, but one thing that Tony O'Shea has done very well in this match, which he hasn't done so well over the course of the week, is it his One doubles. on an M40. Three out of five in that department, including that really clinical 86 kill earlier in the game. One on an M40. John, you require 161. Twice the amount of darts at double, but finds himself behind in the match. One six one. He had a go at this earlier. Treble 17 is found again. Walton wants the ball. 118. Again. Tony, you require 116. This has been a massively improved performance on what we've seen so far. 28. From John, John Walton. This has been what we've seen from Tony O'Shea at the start of the days. He starts well. Went for the 11s to leave the 16s. That's left him 35. So he should get a dart or double here because he's got four numbers all next to each other. 7, 19, 3 and 17. That will all leave him a double as long as he doesn't hit the treble. The 16s he wanted to leave. Tony, you require Tony 88. O'Shea. A chance to wrap this up with the ladies. The ball that Walton has failed to get near. 43. That force John field seems to apply to Tony O'Shea as well, and Walton may force a decider in which he would have the darts. Tony can't look. No score. But he's in luck. And he steps back to try and clean Tony up the remainder. Tony, 45. After more missing from John Walton, who's squandered 13 darts at double in this game. It's double 16, the choice. Game. Tony O'Shea Short and the match. Up an Tony O'Shea. And it's tight at the top in Group A. 14 points for Dubridge and Newton. 12 for Chris Mason. And now a dozen as well for Tony O'Shea. An 86 average. Five scores of more than 140 for him, including a maximum. John Walton actually outscoring him for much of the match. But the doubling was troubling for him. And it was excellent for O'Shea, who is level in third place with Mason. But Mason takes on Dudbridge next in what could be a pivotal contest in the context of this group. Do not go anywhere.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth, where Tony O'Shea has moved to within two points of the two players at the top of the league standings after his 4-2 victory over John Walton in that last match. As you can see, an average in excess of 86 for O'Shea in that match. He was just 29% on his checkouts across the day uh, yesterday. Much more clinical from him in that match. 57% checkout success in that match. The highest checkout, 86. It was John Walton who was scoring the better in that one. Much improved from him this morning. He really has improved as the days have gone on. But it looks like he's going to have too much to do now. And it looks like he will be going into Group C at this moment so then we've got mark dudbridge against chris mason up next for you it feels like a huge game in the context of the league standings phil bars caught up with mark dudbridge mark you must be delighted with the way it's gone so far uh yeah i, c I can't complain to be honest you know i come in with no real practice form same as the other guys you know and um the feeling in the room on the first day was like come on guys let's not embarrass ourselves because it, it could have been horrendous but I think we've all put a good account in and um, you know I think we've all had a bit of a lurgy and it's going round and I'm, I'm I'm not great so to be top in the table going into day three it's a miracle and it's great the 7 one is in a game as well a joint record with with Josh Payne that power scoring is still there yeah, if I could hit a double, I'd probably have some great averages. But um, no, I'm pleased overall. I'm pleased overall. It's been uh, it's been going okay. Obviously, Mace is uh, he's the fittest. He's training and he's showing. So um, he's probably the favourite today. But you know, make no bones about it. I'll be trying my best every game. I'll be trying to hit some one eighties and and get that finishing together. And uh, who knows where it can take me. Yeah, Mark mentioned that finishing. 44 darts missed at the outer ring from him yesterday. As for Chris Mason, well, he won four of his five matches and again had the highest running average across the day's play. So let's get into this one then and see who comes out on top. As I mentioned, it feels like a really, really crucial game even early on in the day. Let's hand back over to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it does feel like a very crucial match and... It's a strange kind of feeling, listening to that interview with Mark Dubridge, almost portraying himself as the underdog when really he's the man on top at the moment. Everybody is very aware of what Chris Mason has been producing over the course of the last couple of days. He's averaging more than 90 for both days. Ten matches now, he's managed to maintain that really consistent level of around that 91 average. Mark Dubridge is closest to him, but the man at the top of the table... And if he does get victory over Mason here, he will put four points between the pair of them. And that, at this stage of Group A, is a very difficult gap to bridge. This could be the most important match of the day, and it's come very, very early in the morning. Which way will it go? I think one thing that's really interesting about this group so far is six players all want to be the underdog. First lag, it's, it's Chris strange how you first. Get that with some players. Game you know, on. even some players on, on like the Pro Tour, I mean Ryan Sell, someone I know very well, and he always wants to be the underdog. And it's like you can't be the underdog when you get into major finals. You're no longer an underdog. It's not gonna happen. Twenty six. And Mark Dubridge, sat top of the table, wants to be the underdog. Going into this as well, Chris Mason's tried to portray himself as the underdog all the way through this. Well, Mark said he'd try One and hit a few 40. maximums again. He hit seven, a record equaling haul in that match against Wes Newton yesterday. He actually hit five of those in consecutive scoring visits in that game. You take 97. out once he was in a position where he couldn't hit a 180, five of them were on the spin. 18 180s for the week so far. Mark 93. Dutch, so he's on for breaking some records. That does include a couple of maximum visits as well that will not register in the 180 column, the 177, for example. Yeah, it would take 42. some going to beat the Group A record, though. Robert Thornton hit 34 in a group once. One hundred. One hundred to leave one six eight there. Some we said that. 
at the top of the show that some of the players in this group not really okay with the, the modern day maths. Forty two. Mason hasn't suffered with a slow start really in any of the days so far, but he has 60. been beaten in both Mark of his opening games. Mark 126. That's the Tony he was showing on day one. Average 91, lost 4-2. And then yesterday, averaged 86 in defeat to Wes Newton in his opening game. 86. Now this is a kind of nervy start from Mace. Maybe he recognises the importance of this match. He said in his interview yesterday 44. at the end of the Mark show, Mark required 40. He felt nervous in game one on both days. It didn't come through in the performance. Is it now coming yeah, through in the performance? Yeah, that's game the first leg. It came Mark through in the results. Play. He lost both of those, and he's lost a leg there in the opening exchange, losing his throw in the Second process. Second leg is Mark to throw first. Game on. 17 years ago, you know, since this man, Mark Dubridge, made it to the, the World Championship final at the Circus Tavern. We're now going to see him back 57. there for the World Seniors Darts Championship next year, February. wonder if we'll see Mason there as well. He also made the final of the World 58. Match Play that year as well, I believe. I was a season ticket holder that week. I remember the week very well. Came in as a bit of a unknown to the PDC audience. 100. He did obviously win the... Well, Masters on the BDO side beforehand, but it was one of his first sort of majors in the PDC, and that sort of year was got him in the, the Premier League the following 96. year. Yeah, it's a bit of a who's who of top darts players when he got to that match play final as well. Beat Wayne Mardle, Alan Warriner, Peter Manley, and Ronnie Baxter before losing out to Phil Taylor. And that has been Mark's trademark this week. The maximum. 45. Mark One hour away from hitting 20 in the group. 100. 100. Not happening, is it, for Chris Mason all of a sudden? Now, this is a surprise. This is the biggest surprise we've seen all week because the one thing that he has been is consistent. Mark, you require 64. Very punched with his dart, so it, there's a bit of a distance between them at the moment. That would be the thing he'd be the most concerned about. The scoreline he could be concerned 32. about in a couple of darts' time because Mark Dubridge looks likely to open up a gap. I say he looks likely, actually, if we look at the form of the doubling of yesterday, it won't be as likely as we think. 43. Mark, you require 32. He can miss as many doubles as he wants because Chris Mason is not finding his feet. No score. It wasn't advice, Mark. It's six starts at double in the match so far for Dubridge. Mason not really in range at all. 60. Mark, you require 32. Yeah, that's game short in the second the line. line. Mark the 19th dart in hand. Confirms the breaker throw and doubles his lead. He's halfway Word to like victory in Christ this crucial battle. First. Game on. At the top of the table. There we go. A perfectly pitched first dart, and all of a sudden Mason might be back in business. One on the You have surely experienced moments where you've been playing really well one day, and the next, all of a sudden, nothing seems to happen. What can you do to try and put it right, or do you just have to 60. wait it out? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one as players. We go through that quite a bit, don't we, where one day's great, the other day it's not odd, even vice versa, where one day you're really struggling, and it 45. feels like you're doing exactly the same things. And often it's those little, tiny, little micromanaged bits that when you collect them all together, 97. just comes out in a small percentage. And in a game of very small percentages like this. Look 
be a right-handed. 66. 180, good recovery there for Mace. And he's got to win this leg, you feel. If he loses his throw here, Dubridge will be serving it out for the match. And 13. you don't want to be losing this game 4-0 when you're playing the guy top of the table. Yeah, one thing that he hasn't done is won many battles, Chris Mason. I think 1-4-3 victory over the last couple of days. Usually 16. his victories have been when he's been racing away from his opponents. This is a really important leg for him. As Matthew Edgar just mentioned, he will have to win it if he's going to try and get involved in a scrap here. Interesting as well, we, we mentioned about Chris missing those key doubles, but I was looking at his doubles today, and what it tends to be, when he's on 16, tops, 78. 10s, 12s, so one of the major doubles or its breakdown, he seems to be okay, is when he comes away from the tops, the 16s or the 12s, that he seems to have the problems. 100, Chris, you require 14s, 112. Those sort of areas, so maybe there's just a little bit of Focusing his practice on what he thinks he's going to be having the most darts at. 96. Well, had a dart double 16, his first at any double in the match. Failed to find it. And now has to hope that Dubridge does not complete this combo. He still can. Treble 19 leaves the double. Mace will return. 54. So okay. Chris, key doubles. This is one of the key doubles that you would tend to practice. That's right on the wire. It's on the wire again. He's yeah, just come right and does. And bird, that is three well-thrown darts, and he gets the reward with the last one in hand. Chris Mason is on the scoreboard. But he's going Ford to need is to break the throw bridge first. throw somewhere. Game on. He has been a mentality monster this week as well, Mason. I think that showcased it perfectly because it's so easy to have a couple of darts right on the wire and think, one on the down, you thirty-seven. Look, you know, how hard done by you are, and end up sort of throwing the last one almost in anger. But he just kept calm, showed the serenity of a swan there, Chris Mason, and 96. gets himself back into the match. We talked about the levels that Chris Mason's shown to see if it's suggesting wanting to get into that seniors world championship. I wonder if one on the down, encouraged him to have another go at this in the future and. Become a bit of a super series regular. Sixty. Well, in the new format, with it being 12 weeks, you're playing over three months, one week out of three months. I think it's probably manageable. 58. I wonder if it... Where is appetite to try mixing it up with some of the younger fans. players? Some of the Super Series big hitters like a Josh Payne, a Scott Williams. And test himself against some of the... Well, he 57. May have to test himself against some of those names if he manages to make it through to next week. Of course, I said one week in 12 might be manageable for Mason, but he might end up playing two weeks in two. One now that is very, very well timed. Showing a different side to his game in this one, Chris Mason. Dubridge might feel he needs to hit this just to stop this charge back, and he's not going to. He said Mason's going to need 52. to break the throw from somewhere. Chris, requires 70. If he takes out this 70, it will be here. That's a great first start. Leaves him on the eights. He took this out yeah, in the last leg, and he takes it out line. in this one. Chris Mason. The 14 data for Chris Mason. To get that breaker throw he needed to level the game. It looked like it Fifth was running away from him Christopher at one point. First but game. now, Chris Mason goes back to being favourite. It is 2-2 and Mason with the darts in his hand. Yeah, well, he's almost 20 points worse than his 81. mean this week. But he's showing some serious scrapping here, isn't he, Chris Mason? Darting defiance, refusing to be left adrift of Mark Dubridge at the end of this match. One hundred and eighty. Well, just be so fitting after all the defeats that Mason's had with big averages, if he somehow managed to turn a 73 or a 75 into points. 100. That would be welcome to darts. Mark's maximum hitting, though, will earn him opportunities. 
58. So he doesn't back that one up. I mentioned the stat earlier that it was five scoring ma maxes on the spin. There were a few other scores in between when he was in finishing range, but Mervyn King, I believe, holds a record for consecutive maximums 92. in a match. He hit four in a row at the last Vegas Desert Classic against Darren Young. 180-180, Young went out and then kicked off the next leg, 180-180. 99. Told that Steve Brown did that at the World Championship as well. So it's a level record. 164. Well, Bristol on show there, isn't he? Talking about Steve Brown while we're watching two players from Bristol battle it out. It's Mason. Could be about to take the lead for the first time in this match. 84. He was 96. He's going Ryan, to need a 96. treble. Going to get two darts at it. Treble that he's been throwing at the entire game. 56. Mark, you require 80. A chance to regain control of the contest, Mark Dubbridge. You had a vice-like grip on the game at the start, but has seen that loosened. Yeah, and he's back in charge. The fifth flag. A Mark nice, Dubbridge. clean kill of 80. Chris Mason felt like he'd done the hard work. Well, he's going to have to do it again. Six. And that was a quality dart. Six like it's marked to throw, throw first. Went to Game the board. But that was a quality dart. That second dart was really stood up and took the whole of the middle and the right hand side out of the bed there. And he had to go left. He had half a target at best and he found it. 14. Well, that call from Marco Meyer will be music to the ears of Mason. Only 40. Hasn't punished. And even a treble now is a let off. 45. For Mark Dubbridge. 45. And that habit that you mentioned of losing his first game 45. each day may be about to continue. Well, he's going to get chances here. That's what this is looking like. He's had one already in this leg. He's got another one here. He gave himself a little bit of a hold. 84. He can buy himself a little bit of time in the scoring phase. Will translate on the double where he might get a handful. 16. We saw a nervy start to this match. Are we going to see a nervy finish as well? 55. The man who might be smiling the most at the moment, Wes Newton, who faces John Walton. One on the next. name, 40. Probably would prefer Chris Mason to win the game because he can go out right top of the table if that happens. But he's going to be hot on the heels of Mark Dubridge, even if he wins it. One on the end, 40. A verse of there's only one Chris Mason coming from the player's room. 47. Big dart, this. Big, big dart. One on the end, 37. Puts Mark the pressure on. 76. Tries to make Mark miss. But he will get a dart at double. He took out 80. Oh, he won't get a dart at double. I spoke too soon. I backed him for the single. 36. And now Mason can return 80. the favour from the previous leg. Going to have to go a different way. At least 65. It's the ball to level it up. 55. It's a good effort there from Mark Mason. Mark, you require will return to extend his position at the top. Can't find the double top, nor the double ten. Game. But he does nail Shots. the double five. And, match. Mark and Mark Dubridge has just earned himself a victory that might mean we will be seeing Chris Mason in Group B. There's still plenty of darts to be thrown, but there's a four-point gap now between the league leader, Mark Dubridge, and third-placed Chris Mason, with Wes Newton sandwiched in between. And the reason why Dubridge has won that match is because Chris Mason has failed to follow the levels he produced in the previous two days.
struggled at the start of the match, and Mark Dubridge made the most of it and gets the win that sees him pull clear at the top. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Mark Dudbridge has just claimed what feels like a really important victory in terms of qualification from Group A this week. It was a 4-2 win over Chris Mason, who he is, of course, battling it out with at the top of the table. An average in excess of 82 for Dudbridge in that one. And for the third time this week, Mace losing his opening game of the day. A really edgy start from him in that one. It took him two legs to settle and really find his range. His opponent didn't have that issue as he continued to score heavily in the opening legs. And despite some frailties towards the back end, limited pressure early on meant Flash could establish a 2-0 lead. Despite opening the door for Mace, he did enough to get over the line. As you can see, 36% checkout success for him in that one. Mace did have six starts at a double, but he just couldn't find that consistent level that he's shown in the opening two days of play here at the Super Series. A real shocker there for Chris Mason. As I said, he's averaged so consistently, performed so consistently, and he'll surely feel that if he could have found that level out there this morning, he would have got the two points on the board. We can have a little look at the league standings then, and it is, of course, Mark Dudbridge who returns to the top of the table. He's now on 16 points. Next up, it is Wes Newton against John Walton. Wes Newton could join him on that tally, of course, if he is to be victorious here. In his opening game, we saw him take out a fantastic 1-1-6 checkout. And as if by magic, you can see it on the screen here. Wes Newton comfortably won both of his fixtures against John Walton yesterday. So much so that John's only managed to register one leg in this fixture so far this week. Of course, Walton has improved as the week has gone on. And yesterday we saw him register his first ton plus checkout of the week. How will this one go then? Will Wes Newton keep that pressure on Mark Dudbridge at the top of the table? Let's find out in the company of Murph and Matt. Well, everything you've just said, Abby, suggests that Wes Newton will do that. John Walton has not had a happy time against many players in this group, but certainly has not had a happy time against Wes Newton. And 
Newton already off to a very strong start today. Victory here against Walton for the third day on the spin would see him go level on points with Mark Dobridge and it would start to appear like a two-horse race for top spot and then a two-horse race for the Group B between Chris Mason and Tony O'Shea. But we're not at the point of writing anybody off just yet. John Walton, of course, was written off before the day had even started. Impossible for him to amass enough points to finish top of the table and almost impossible for him to amass enough points to finish in Group first B. So it's going to be to a week of early morning starts for John Walton. What's the mentality? What's the objective for the rest of the day, knowing that? Is it just to try and 44. work on the action, work on the, the level and hope that he can find his best stuff Thursday and Friday? Practice. You know, how many times has John Walton had the opportunity to play this length of time, to practice for this length of time? And not only that, but if you could pick yourself some practice partners, there's some fantastic practice partners in this group. So, one on the day to practice and get ready for the rest of the week. And Wes Newton kind of a little bit under the radar for us today, isn't he? We, we obviously drew our eye to Chris Mason on the, how well he's been playing. We drew our eye to Mark Dubridge on the points that he's amassed so far. And Wes Newton was kind of ignored in the early days. And the bookies had him at 7-2 to two to win this 100. group. But like you said, if he wins this one, he goes joint top and all of a sudden is actually a serious contender. He will have to play Chris Mason later on, who's been the standout performer. That's the last game he will play. The next game in two games' time after this one, he'll be taking on Mark Dudbridge, and he will have the darts 59. in that game. That will be a game between first and second place. Something will have to give. Yeah, there's some interesting games coming up. 16. Before then, Dudbridge takes on Gary Robson. But after that, Tony O'Shea against Chris Mason. Now, if Mason's slow start continues, suddenly he finds himself in fourth spot. And thinking about the possibility of being in Group C. 85. How things can turn around. Or if Wes Newton beats Mark Dudbridge, 58. it kind of goes back West into Chris Mason's 36. hands again there because he will have to play Wes Newton, who would then be the favourite for the group. Uh, that's game short in the first yeah, absolutely. Wes Newton. We did that victory against Tony O'Shea before that, but Wes Newton is... Looking good today, and wonder if everybody second lag is John you said first earlier on has on. kind of tried to cast themselves as the underdog. Maybe Newton's the ones going under the radar. We're all talking about this race between Dubridge and Mason at the start of the day, but where's Newton so far looks like the most confident and capable player. Maybe it's because he's the most youthful player in the group, the forty five year old from Fleetwood. Yeah, a real whipper snapper. Interesting to see if he gets on the development tour at any point. Well, Chris Mason would have you believe that 45-year-olds do play on the development tour. He 41. made a great comment <laughs> recently. I had to laugh. Typical May saying that it won't be long before you can play on the development tour and seniors tour at the same time. One on the M40. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that it's important to give younger players as many opportunities as possible at the start of their career? Or do you think there is a a level of unfairness 44. about players up to the age of 25 having more opportunities to play. I like the opportunities to play. I don't like the crossovers to the senior rankings. That's the One thing that has to change in my view. You cannot get into senior ranking titles and take senior ranking prize money off the back of a qualification system that not all tour card holders have the same advantage or the same access 16. to. West should require 82. We said that Wes Newton was looking in a strong position, the baby of this group. He might well be the daddy of the group come the end of the day. 42. And a sensational start to this match, really, from Newton. We'll go back to that one in a in a second. 41. Wes Newton Wes looking at a 13 40. dart leg. Double his lead. Yeah, that's game shot. over the 100 line. average at the moment. This is a great start from Wes Newton. 
and the leg difference as well could really come into play. He'll be looking for a Third strong victory here. Throw first. You you a strong victory on. against Gary Robson. You rarely see a golf that big, do you, in the averages? Just going back to what I was saying about those crossovers and the bit I don't like about it now. I'm going to use this as an example because it's a realistic possibility. Bo Graves goes to Q school, gets a tour card. 18. I go to Q school, get a tour card. We're going to compare the two. Now, what I do is I get access. You said to it was a realistic possibility. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get access to 30 players' championships and 13 European tour events, which is my access to try and get in the world championships. Now, if Bo did that and we both had a similar year on the Pro Tour, but then she can go and do the development tour and, and the women's tour, she will get two more cracks at getting into the World Championship through those Order of Merit systems. And then if it doesn't come to it, we go to the uh, PDPA qualifier at the end of the year. So actually, the opportunity that that player gets compared to me, but yet we should have the same opportunity, we've both got the Tour card. Now, if I could outperform on the Pro Tour... But when it One comes to it, because that 14. World Championship is so heavily weighted, she'll leapfrog past you, keep a card while you lose yours on events that they've had extra access to, and it's not a level playing field, shall we say. 16. But it's a tough one, isn't it? I think particularly that women's series point is a, a, John a very tough 41. one. John forty one. Because season on season, yeah, the other point is correct, that it might not be a, a level playing field, but of course... Women's darts hasn't had a level level playing field for years, and something has to happen to give 30. them the best opportunities. And if a female player got through to the pro tour, like Lisa Ashton did, and then was denied the chance of qualifying via the women's series as well, the PDC are in then danger of maybe losing one of the best assets for those qualifications. John, you require I don't think you should 11. take them away from that. Like you say, Lisa Ashton, she got into those spots, so she took what was it, twenty two thousand mm. pounds in prize money that no other male player got access to. But 79. Where should he go? 109. Where he can play in the Grand Slam, but he can't have the ranking money. Interesting point. Who for thought? 69. Well, let's John see if John Walton can give West Newton a bit of food for thought in this match, because this is for a break of throat. Yeah, uh, that's game shot. And, and the break he gets, and John suddenly Walton. the brakes are on for Wes Newton, who was seemingly racing away. Remember, Walton gets the winner day. Is John the throw first. Game on. Well, he managed to get one in this match. A win that would be, well, pleasing to most players in the group, maybe particularly Mark Dubbridge. 100. Happy said, watch out for. John Walton and Gary Robson spoiling the party a little bit here and upsetting a few people. This would upset Webbs Newton. 59. The average just keeps tumbling. Yeah, it was going to be difficult to maintain the level that he was producing 96. at the start of the match, Webbs Newton, but we know that all of the players are capable of big stuff. From time to time. 60. Highest average that Wes Newton has ever produced in a, 81. a single game of darts, incidentally. 115.28. That was now back in 60. 2012, 10 years ago in the aforementioned Championship League of Darts, and he did it against Phil Taylor. Sort of peak Wes Newton, really, that sort of area. Like 211, 85. 14 sort of area, wasn't it? Well, well remembered, because all of his top 10 averages came between 2012 and 2014. Edgarpedia. Yeah. 100. John, you require 139. Starting downstairs. We'll try and tee up tops. 59. All the twos in the Wes Newton column. Two legs. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. But it could be 2-2 two, two in a moment. 94. John, you require John Walton 18. can find two 20s. 
and then double 20. Forty. West Union Choir, 128. There, to open up the tops a bit. Was Darrell Gurney like? Can he lose tops? Use the treble 20 to give a dart. The ball won't get that. So John Walton's got a chance to level this game up. 45. Which, John Uri Choir, your mind back 40. four minutes ago, you would not be thinking we'd be sat here saying that. Yeah, the fireworks start has fizzled out from Wes Newton. And Walton is wandering back into the match. 30. But now, West he's Unicron hoping that Newton doesn't clean this up. Treble 17 will be the first port of call for the Warrior. Now the 16 segment, and now the middle of the ball. Can't quite find the sweet John spot, so it's another 10. chance for Walton. He's getting a fair few chances today, isn't he? Yeah, that's game short in the fourth yeah, line. 15 darts in his... Opening game, he hit two of those. Is it two here? Levels it up at two, two. And you say Fifth the fireworks start has gone down. First. It's more like a sparkler now from Wes Newton. Yeah, wet one. Well, here we go. One on the end, 40. One hundred. Eighty-five. Well, had fifteen darts at a double in the last one. He's had eight in this one, which suggests he's finding more trebles than he has for the last couple of days. His average was eighty-one in his opening game, which is a 100. massive improvement on some of the things we've seen from him. He opened his opening day with 67 against Mark Dudbridge. Fifty five yesterday with a four nil defeat. Twenty three darts at double already today. He'd only had 60. sixty five darts at double across ten matches before it. Not like he's going to be in any in this leg. 170 points behind. 28. West you require 116. Treble needed for West to get a dart in this one. He has got the treble. Tops. 76. Will return with at least three more darts at tops. Goes 3 2 off and push himself one away from the match. Game, he probably would have thought he'd had wrapped up by now the way he started. West Uri Choir, 40. Yeah, it looked like a walk in the park for Wes at the beginning of the game, but he's been bogged down in the mud. Where's Newton? 20. Not happy at all. You can see in the expression of Newton as he retrieves his darts. Can't understand why. He can start so well and then West suddenly find himself struggling. He was bogged down by the mud. It's like he's stuck in quicksand yeah, at the minute. The fifth flag. West Newton. He's finding a way out of there. That's a 3-2 lead. He's one away. He's just going to want this over with now. Wants the points. Needs Six the points. Is John the, throw the longer first. this goes, the Game. worse he's going to feel. He just wants to get this wrapped up here. I've always considered Wes Newton sometimes a little bit of a rusher as well, and when you panic, you can end up One throwing a bit too 40. fast. He approaches the hockey with the arm already in the air, ready to throw, doesn't he, Wes Newton? Case in point there, when John Walton just a little bit slower to retrieve the darts. Wes is stood there with his arm up in position, ready. One on the M40. Walton back to back 140s. There it is again. Where's stood in pose position like a statue waiting 76. to throw his darts. Well, you do a bit of coaching yourself. I know most coaches would say the best thing to do is to get to the hockey and set yourself before you even lift the dart from your, from your hand. Yeah. 
address the board, as John Park would say. Yeah, what it enables you to repeat the action, doesn't it? Because you've got to retrieve the other two darts from your hand. You're walking with the first one already in front of you. You're not really going through the same routine three times. 26. Because it does. It just puts a bit of unnecessary fatigue on the shoulder. John, you require 121. Maybe a bit of unnecessary fatigue in this match for Wes Newton, who could have walked away with it. Walton hasn't been a million miles better than he has been previously. No need to look at the ball. 81. Now, Wes Newton should start on the 19s. Now should move to the 18s. 134. John, you require 40. Had he done that, a couple of trebles would have left him a finish and just put pressure on John Walton. Thirty. And due to that counting error, means he will not be coming back out of finish. John Walton will return. We've seen John go straight for this. We've 45. seen him split it. So John, it's you safe to say it's 10. all done on how he feels in this very moment. Yeah, that's game feels good in, the six in this very moment. John that's Walton. how he's going to feel. Sneaks that one into the corner and takes it to a level game. Something we've not seen in this tie the last couple of so days. Whereas Newton's like, dominated this tie. 4-0 on Monday. 4-1 on. yesterday. He'll be happy enough we have 4-3 because it'll give him the points. And he's motoring. 140. To that finish line. Well, one man cheering on. Walton will be Mark Dubridge who plays Gary Robson in the next match. And if Walton can somehow turn this around and get over the line in the last leg, Dubridge will still be clear at the top of the table, but could be four points clear of Newton, having played the same amount of games before they meet in Game 7. 100. See how important that last start was. It was a big last start in the context of the game. Just keeps that gap. Forces John Walton to get a 140, just to be behind the advantage of the darts. 100. 100. Again, big third dart from Wes Newton. I'm just going to want to keep on his coattails here. Stay close. It really needs a couple of trebles. Not going to find them. 41. Wes, you require 161. That could be the moment that separates the players. 64. Good thinking to leave a two darter. Again, though, two treble turn would apply some pressure here for John Walton. Needs one treble to leave any kind of out. 60. Wes, you require 97. Six darts. Might need them. 90 to go. That is awkward trying to get through to that. He might go for the 11s here because that 19 is blocked. 43. There's always the risk there that he could also have took out that 17. Yeah, both flights were kind of eclipsing that target because of the weird lie of that second dart. So it's only going to be two darts at double, but John Walton... Well, he's kind of gift-wrapping this leg for Wes Newton. Christmas is on the horizon. This might be an 17. early present. Wes, you require 54. For the match then, it's been a hard fought tussle. Oh, and 49. Wes Newton has made a right old mess John of it. Not only has he missed, but he's left himself five in bits if he does come back. It looked like Wes Newton was about to be gifted this opportunity. And the pair of them just keep exchanging the presents. I mean, he needed the single there to give himself a dart at the ball. In this situation, this one is not easy. West, you require five. Now, this is where it all closes up and looks tiny, but that's a good authoritative Game. dart. Shot. And it is an important win West for Newton. Wes Newton, who kind of fell over the line in the end. It has to be said, having sprinted at the start of the match, he was down to a crawl towards the end of it.
but he does get the job done. 4-3 against John Walton, and that means he is now tied at the top of the table on 16 points, along with Mark Dubridge, who does have a game in hand, and he's going to play it right after the break against Gary Robson. Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Wes Newton has just won his second match of the day coming through in a last leg decider to get the better of John Walton in that one. Well, Wes got off to a sublime start racing into a 2-0 lead. It looked like it was going to be another comprehensive victory for him over John Walton because before today's action got underway, Walton had taken just one leg from Newton in their previous two meetings. But he was pegged back by Walton who gratefully accepted the opportunities Wes allowed him. Wes clearly unhappy with his drop-off in form in that one and a catalogue of errors from both players in the end. A real scrappy match, but Wes stumbled over the line to get another crucial two points in the terms of the league standings. We can see what that does then to Group A. It does, of course, move Wes onto 16 points level with Mark Dudbridge, but because of that 4-3 victory, it is Dudbridge who has the better leg difference. It is Dudbridge who's up next against Gary Robson. Of course, Dudbridge coming through in another crucial match earlier on today, getting the better of Chris Mason here. He is pinning the winning double to get over the line in that match. He's scoring again a key component in that one. You can see their head in hands at the end of that one. A bit more double trouble for Flash in that match. He is up next against Gary Robson. What can Robson do to try and get the better? Of course, it was Dubridge who got a convincing 4-0 win when they met yesterday, allowing Robson just three darts at the outer ring. Will this one follow in the same manner? Let's find out and hand back over to our commentary team. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it's a good question. What can Gary Robson do? What he'll hope to do is do what he did on Monday when he beat Mark Dubridge by four legs to two. Um, it was a convincing win, as you said, for Dubridge a day later. The man now setting the pace in Group A, the man that they're all trying to catch. And we'll have a, an important run of games now. This one before Tony O'Shea 
meet Chris Mason, the pair of them on the same points, and then Wes Newton against Mark Dubridge in a battle of the top two. So we're coming to a point where we might start to see the picture kind of form. But Gary Robson has shown this level of inconsistency that sometimes he's brilliant, sometimes he's bad, and that makes him dangerous. First mark, it's marked the throw first. I think on everything Keep we've on. seen most recently, though, we've got to say Mark Dudbridge is a strong favourite to take this one, especially with the advantage of throw. And I cast my eye at the table and think if he wins this, and then I cast my eye at the 59. fixtures and see that actually his next game would be against Wes Newton. Yeah, it might be a bit of a must-win for Mark in a strange way because if he doesn't win it, then Newton beats him. All 16. of a sudden, the roles are reversed. Well, sandwiched between those two games as well is the Chris Mason, Tony O'Shea game. Both of those on 12 points, which essentially is loser gets Mark append. 54. Mark append means where we scrub them out of the running. We think the race is run. Obviously, the race won't One be over. There'll be 40. other things to run for. Group B position still available. That is long from decided. Yeah, six more players ready to join the action 85. here at the Moda Super Series this week. Alan Norris, Barry Bates, Mark Layton, Andy Jenkins, Richie Housen, and as you've been hearing, our very own Paul Nicholson on this week that's featuring... Two eighty-seven of our regular commentators. One of them has given a good account of himself, and that puts the pressure on Paul. Just hope in the next phase that we can have another commentators week with fifty-nine. Myself, Murph, Henry. Maybe get Abby involved. Owen. And you don't want to be uh, finishing below me, Matt. One hundred and forty. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I wonder what the uh, the expectation level would be for the likes of myself and Henry if that 52. happened. I think it, I'd be happy to go through Very good in 74. the entire group A and get one leg. Gary Robson is threatening here. We said that Dubridge was favourite, partly because he had the throw, but the throw has not mattered at all. Dubridge has been off colour completely in this opening leg. Maybe guilty of thinking he's got the job done 60. by beating Mason Going earlier on. Putting so much mental energy into that one, he's forgot about the rest. Yeah, that's game we also saw the first lap. nerves. Gary Robson. Well, we are here seeing a lot of nerves from Mark Dubridge. Look at the reaction we got at the end of that game with Chris Mason. He joined the the Cuddle Second Club. Second it's Gary to throw first. Game on. Yeah, well, he started this match in a similar way to which Mason started against him. Only in the 95. Mid 100s when Robson went out after 16. The break in leg one. Ninety six. Wonder how hard it is though for players that have got so much history together. That, I mean, let's be frank. You know, when you look at the stats and the averages, the players like Dudbridge and Mason will be looking at Gary Robson and John Walton and going, "Forty three. Win those, or I've got to win those." Also knowing that they're almost writing off these players that they've had so many years of history and know what they've got in the locker. It must be quite hard. And One on the M40. You must just be taking it a little bit gingerly, a little bit, this could bite me. Particularly when you've just seen one of your rivals get the win against that player, like Wes Newton 75. did in match one against Robson. You're sort of forced to do the same, and Dubbridge already... Beaten by Robson this week, as we mentioned. 46. Four counting there from Dubridge. If he'd have gone on the 19s, five 19s, which is the one treble and the two singles, would have left the 170 staying up and then switching. Would have bogeyed 36. himself, even if he'd have hit what he wanted. We had a, a message in from one of our commentators saying they don't want to play in the commentators week. That's Paul Nicholson. He's obviously running scared. No, it wasn't. It was Henry Deacon. One on the end, 21. Doesn't want to be embarrassed by Magic Murph, obviously. To be fair, we would need one commentator at least to not play, wouldn't we? Otherwise, 
be a bit of silence on the airwaves, which some of you may appreciate. Or we'll just do it ourselves as we go. Yeah, commentate on the other player throwing. That'd be great, wouldn't Gary, it? Gary, you require match? 156. 156 would be great for Gary Robson. That's not great. 82. Mark Ten Gooding for a level game. 20. To get that throw back. Well, he's going no to come score. back to the ball. Gary, you require He actually threw that last dart with his eyes closed. Mark Dubbridge. He's closing his eyes here and hoping he doesn't see, or hear, should I say, the game shot yeah, call. That's game shot than a second line. Right in the middle of Gary the eight, and he's doubled his lead. It's 2 0. You just hear the, yeah, that's game shot call. Third lag is marked to throw first. Game on. Well, he's in a bit of trouble. Self inflicted trouble at times. 64. Yeah, Robson mopping up. The mess that was made by Mark Dubridge and just two legs away now from the win. 60. We talked about commentating on the other player's throw. It reminds me of a film that no, no one ever seems to have seen. I hope you're going to say you've seen this. Basketball. Never seen it, never heard of 100. it. Every time I reference this film, no one's ever seen it or even heard it. Someone surely on Twitter land can tweet in and back me up that you've seen basketball. I'm not making this film up. It exists. Classic psych outs. It's usually Paul Nicholson that I have to tell. 100. I've not seen the, the film references that he gives. Now Edgar's getting on the act. See, Paul Nicholson, someone who might have seen it, actually, because that's... Oh, well, undoubtedly. Humor, 16. Yeah. I don't think there's a film he hasn't seen. 46. Well, a few twists and turns in the plot in this day, it seems, because when Mark Dubridge won that... Third game of the day, the opening one for him against Chris one Mason, who we all thought was going to be his closest rival and may still prove to be in the race for first place in this group. He was looking like Tubridge could be up, up and away. 91. Gary, you require but The balloon has been burst here by Gary Robson. Yeah, nothing flashy about this from Dudbridge. This would be a 84. flash finish if you could take out the Mark 100. 100. Might need to take out the 100 after that last dart from Gary Robson. Leaves himself a potential two darter, and that is the end of that. Mark Dubridge cannot take out this finish. 16. Gary, you require well, He could have 62. thrown that dart with his eyes closed and ended up still being able to finish. It was the only place he couldn't still finish that. Mark Dubridge, who now has to hope that this isn't hit. 42. This time he gets his wish. Mark, you require 40. It tops to leave this tops. And he hit the tops to take the leg. He missed it in the last one. One more in hand. Yeah, that's Huge. game shot than a third Big line. moment. Mark he was facing down the barrel of going 3 0 down. And with the prospect of Gary Robson throwing first Four to serve it out, Gary that would have really first. affected the Game leg on. difference, but also give encouragement to everybody else at the top end of this table so far, especially Chris Mason and Tony O'Shea, who are coming up next. 26. Gary Robson wins this. They'll be two very, very interested parties. Absolutely. It could have been a, a flash thrashing. But suddenly, 43. Gary Robson is faltering. One hundred. As soon as you've done the uh, the theme of films, I'm going to set a little theme for our 40. social media followers to tweet in. How about changing a word in a film to make it darts themed? 
13. At MSS Darts on Twitter. Get in touch. Have a bit of fun on this Wednesday morning. We've finally had someone who's seen basketball. 82. Lee James tweeted into MSS Darts and at the Edgar 501 saying, Basketball is one of my favourite all time. Could do we a crossover in the darts. I agree. Well, that's a slam dunk there from Gary Robson. The first max of this match. 57. Yeah, do get in touch. We want your darts themed films at MSS Darts. Change a word in the title to make it darts themed. Ian East has also seen it. Oh, sorry. Ian East One has also seen basketball. Nine. Right, so that makes three. And I'm confident in Paul Nicholson. Are we confident in Gary Robson here? Because if he hits this double 18 when he comes back, One on the M14. Mark Dubridge Gary, you will have to win 36. three straight legs to take the points in this one. Good miss. 20. Bad miss. Mark, you require 39. Which offers a chance. Mark Dudbridge. He will get two at the 16s himself. Yeah, and he that's only needs the one. The and he levels it up. He looked likely. Go 3 0 down. He had one dart left in his hand. He was in trouble. Fifth flag is marked at throw He's first. He's turned it around. Game back on. to back legs. He's now got the throw back in a best of five from this point. By the way, my offering is a brave dart. and. Lock, stock, and three smoking barrels. One on the M14. One hundred. I all of a sudden cannot think of I'm any a, film. film yeah. <laughs> well, I can change two words. We can have Matt Edgar's day off. 81. I like the sound of that one. Forty eight. Forty four. I literally can't think of a single film. What about the nineteen fifty seven war classic Dud Bridge over 16. the River Kwai? One on the end, 34. Is there any horror films you can think of? Because you can try and slip Gary Robson into there, because he'll be feeling like this is a horror movie at the moment. 90. Mark, you require 102. Up, and now he's about to go 3 2 down. 90. Yeah, that's and good. Short and the behind. Flag. Mark Dudbridge. Suddenly, Dudbridge having a scream. Six like it's Gary to throw first. Game on. Found a third person who's seen basketball, James Kent. Says it's a terrible and great film at the same time. I can't agree more. 39. And if you're not doing anything tonight, I'd suggest going and have a little watch of basketball. Good way to spend the evening. 81. Getting a, some popcorn, some Maltesers. Bit of cherry coke. A big night in. I'd do all that just without the 60. film. Don't forget, if you're stuck with something to do Thursday and Friday evening, then we'll provide the entertainment. 77. Double days of darts away. Double sessions on Thursday and Friday, as always, here at the Super Series. It is Group B and Group C getting underway tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. and then 10 p.m. One on the M40. Loads of tweets coming in. Keep them coming. Tweets coming in, changing titles of films. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot of these titles of films. I'm I'm the sort of guy that watches the same film all the time. I've watched Free Guy for like 81. the last 
362 nights in a row. I like to watch things I don't have to concentrate on too much. I'm just putting them in the background. Yeah, I've had a couple of people who've kind of done your niche Nine reference nine. that you've done there and had to explain things about the film in the tweet so it doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. Give us well-known ones and we'll read them out. 82. Mark, you require 144. Very niche ones like the classic basketball. Fifty-four. Gary, you require ninety-nine. Nineteens well, will be the starting point here for Robs and a chance to take us to a decider and a chance to deny a chance for Mark Dubridge to win. But he now does have that opportunity. Eighty-seven. Mark it's a Uriquan chance a lot in 90. that sentence. And this is what this is. It's a chance for Mark Dudbridge to get this game wrapped up. To get the points that he desperately needs. And he has made a mess. Chance has gone. 36. Gary, you require 12. And now the opportunity arrives for Gary Robson to level the Gary game. And that's exactly what he does. Line. Well, Dudbridge does have Gary the darts Robson. in the decider. But this is a little bit twitchy for the league leader. Seven ten final lag. It's Mark to throw first. Well, Came on. Said at the start, Mark Dubridge's favourite due to the advantage of throw. This is why. In the last leg decider. To make the advantage of throw 57. work, you are going to need to be hitting a treble of throw. That will force your opponent to average the hundred. Or reel off that stat. That I mentioned yesterday 60. again, Gary Robson in last leg decided against a throw has only ever won once in the Super Series in nine attempts. 99. Mark Dubridge, on the other hand, has won once in two attempts against throw and on throw. 140. Dubridge is living every dart here. You'd see him puff the cheeks out when that last one didn't go in. One he can puff the cheeks out, clench the fist and celebrate that one. Huge 180 at the right moment. He's been the biggest 180 hitter. But that could be the most 96. important one. He gets himself a, enough of a lead after nine darts. Should ensure that he has the first throw at a double. 93. And that treble... Guarantees that, unless he does miss big numbers in the next visit. We've seen that a few times today. 95. Mark, you require as as he stays straight, he'll get a chance to close this out. 92. Double top. He does get a dart at double. 32. He's over the top, but it's a chance for Gary, Robson to rob him. We'll need to find a treble. Does with the first dart, so should get a dart for the match. It's going to be at tops. Dart that Dubbridge has just 90. missed. Mark will get three darts for two points. Mark, you require well, how 40. big could that miss be? Not just for Robson, not just for Mark Dubbridge, but for Mason, for Newton, for the entire group. How big could these misses be? Game. Oh, he gets there Shots in the end. The Mark, Dubbridge. Mark Dubbridge. Over the line. Against Gary Robson. You can see there it is a, a big sigh of relief for Flash, who does pull further clear at the top of the table with that win, but it was far from comfortable for Mark Dubridge. And his position is still not unassailable. Wes Newton is in action in a couple of games' time against Mark Dubridge. If he wins that game, he can go level at the top of the table. Chris Mason before that in desperate need of a win against Tony O'Shea, who could actually be the surprise player in the field and put himself in content. You will hear what Matt Edgar has to say about it all. He's going to go and talk to Abby, and he'll be back after the break. Ten more games to come.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we've just seen Mark Dubridge come through in a last leg decider to get the better of Gary Robson. Matt Edgar, that felt like a really significant victory, that one, didn't it? I think you could see it as well in Dubridge's reaction to that last start in hand again. He had the last dart in hand to beat Chris Mason earlier, and he did the same against Gary Robson there. Gary Robson did have a dart, and it was a well-thrown dart as well, wasn't it? Just underneath the, top, uh, well, the bottom wire. And Gary Robson, people in that practice room would have been praying that he could get over the line in that one. Tony O'Shea against Chris Mason coming up next. This, would you say it's a must-win for both of them? Yeah, I think whoever loses this, they're not out of the running to make it an interesting day. You know, Group B is a massive advantage, so they've still got that to play for. But in terms of winning this group, if you lose this one, you're pretty much out of it, yeah. Yeah, we can have a look at the group table now and see how things stand. Of course, it is Mark Dudbridge on 18 points in the league table. Tony O'Shea and Chris Mason, one of them will move on to 14 points. So as Matt said, they do still have a chance of toppling Dudbridge from the top of the table with a win in this one. Quite decent leg difference as well for Dubridge at the top of the league standings. Coming into this next match, though, Tony O'Shea, he's been a really interesting one, hasn't he? Because in his opening matches on the previous two days, he's taken two legs to settle into matches. He started today really, really strongly. I honestly don't know what to expect from Tony O'Shea, and I don't think probably Tony probably knows what to expect. You know, you see an 11 dart leg from Tony. And then he'll go and miss nine darts at a double. You know, we just don't know what to expect from him. And I think that's quite an interesting factor as well. And playing Chris Mason, who's now given us a seed of doubt. Has he got a seed of doubt? We'll see if that grows in this one. And that's the thing, isn't it? That's what we're probably going to learn from Chris Mason because we've seen such a consistent level from him. Now that he's had that little dip, we'll see how he's able to respond. Well, one thing that's quite a positive for him is he's not won any of his opening games. <laughs> He's lost the first game every day, and you know, he said to you, didn't he? He said he felt nervous in those opening games, and he's got better as it went. So, if he keeps that going, then he shouldn't be too worried about losing that first game in the way he did. And I think it'll be fair to say that whereas yesterday when we saw him bust that 130, he said he was thinking too much about getting a, a high average, he wanted a ton top in average. He won't be thinking about that right now, will he? No, it's all about points, and let's be fair, Mark Dudbridge has looked vulnerable. Mm -hmm. He's getting the wins, but he's vulnerable there. And I don't expect him to go through this with a clean sweep. I think he's going to get beat somewhere. He's clutching, isn't he? He's getting those last darts in hand. Eventually, that's going to run dry, and someone's going to pip him to the post. Indeed. Can Mason mop up the points in this one and close the gap on Dudbridge? Or will it be O'Shea who does that? Let's hand back over to Chris Murphy. Thanks, Abby. Yes, every match taking on extra significance now as we near... The climax of Group A, 10 games still to come. And the next couple of them are going to be very, very important. Tony O'Shea, despite not being at his best all week, really, Chris Mason, who certainly has been, they find themselves locked level on 12 points. And as Matt Edgar was saying there, probably the loser can say goodbye to any chance of topping the table. Chris Mason and Tony O'Shea, Battling it out to make it to 14. Mace probably still has the better chance if he does win because he has a, a leg difference that is level with Wes Newton. Four behind Mark Dubridge. After that defeat to Dubridge, he will be looking to put things right in this one. Then following first this, it is Newton against David Dubridge. A tungsten tussle game. at the top of the table. Before Mason returns to face John Walton and then Tony O'Shea meets Gary Robson. 121. Matt really? Edgar has joined me from upstairs. And yeah, we are we are entering a spell of real importance. Popcorn darts, you could say. 120. Crack out the popcorn because these next two games are going to really decide the way we're going with this group. Sticking with the film references there, I see. Nicely done. 99. Weservoir Dogs, by the way, is the best one I've heard so far. Very uh, fitting to today's group as well. 60. Surely there's a switch here. 49. It takes a lot to get Tony O'Shea to switch, but even he couldn't try and force one past those two darts. Oh, 
already you can see early signs that the Mason grouping is coming back. He's 59. spraying them a little bit in that opening game. Forty-two. Said upstairs with Abby that I'm just not sure what to expect from Tony O'Shea. We've seen everything, haven't we? The eleven dart leg, and then we've seen twenty-seven dart legs. One hundred and eighty. Much more good stuff from Chris Mason than bad stuff. Unfortunately for him, the bad stuff probably came in the worst possible 54. match. Chris, you require seventy-seven. The good stuff though could be back. 18 for tops. Yeah, that's game short in the first there. It's a 15 data from Chris Mason. Instantly wrestles the advantage of throw into his favour. And he gets the Second win here, to 14 Chris points. You've got to fancy game he's on. going to be a Wes Newton fan in that Dubbridge game because Chris Mason will have to play Wes Newton in the last game of the day. 16. Yeah, if you're wondering... How good a 15 darter is? That's 100 average, 100.2 to be exact. 180. Nine darter is 167 average, and that's what Tony O'Shea's on after the first three darts. Come on, Tony, four, five, 100. six. I've had a couple of threats haven't we all of them 85. coming yesterday a yeah, decent day of darts yesterday wasn't it? 83.5 our average for the day i'm feeling that might 85 get a few of those mid 90 averages going again be under threat because the bottom half of the the draw have just raised it slightly today. 43 Forty-two. Do think that maybe one or two people, maybe myself included, has been surprised at the standard of 59. this group. You look at it, you see that it's uh, a bunch of the older players. You kind of automatically assume that the players on the decline, but some of them are harbouring ambitions to get back on the professional tour. Others have 100. ambitions to do stuff on so the seniors tour. One hundred and thirty-four. And then there's Chris Mason, who claims he had no ambitions at all. Still, in that interview yesterday with Abby, he was saying, I'm a commentator. That's all I am. I'm a commentator. 98. He just picked Chris up the darts. 114. 58. Three darts in hand at 18 36. to get the advantage of throw back at the first time of asking. Yeah, that's game short in the Runs second place. second Tony levels at the game. One apiece, and we're back on throw. Third Shame leg, it's Tony to throw first. We've seen this sort game of pattern on. in other games as well, haven't we, where players just break, 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 and then just hold at the end. 121. Yeah, the hard bit gets done, and then it gets given straight back. This would be the great... John Gwynn, he used to put it best, didn't he, saying that a break is not really a break unless you hold. Sixty. That is a good lie for Chris Mason. One on the end, 40. Fancied that. 85. Finding that first dart. This was a feature when he was playing his best earlier on in the week. That first 100. dart straight in the treble. It was a settler as well when you get that red in nice and early. 
One on the down 40. Well, that's good timing from Tony O'Shea to get himself down to a two data. Mason in the ascendancy on his throw here. 60. Tony, you require 95. An opportunity to hold his throw for the first time from either player. 16s. Yeah, that's game shot than the Tony O'Shea. Tony O'Shea. Said we don't know what to expect from him. Does he know what to expect from him? We're expecting good things from him now. Two Forward for three on the doubles. Chris so first. Game on. Let's just separate them in the averages. Those players are around about the mid 80s. One on the round, 31. Good response from Mason to her losing that leg. 55. Battering the treble 20 here, Chris Mason. One on the down 40. I notice actually, Matt, that the board seems to have been battered that much. It appears to be bleeding at the moment. It's Colin Lloyd here, is he? It didn't come off well 83. from that encounter, did he, Colin Lloyd? Was a bit of pain, a split knuckle, and also a dent in his bank account. One hundred. One thirty from Chris Mason. That is a bit of a magic number for him this week. He's taken it out twice, and he's bust it once. Forty-four. Chris, you require one hundred and thirty. Again, that first arc goes in. He's on a different route this time. 90. Put himself tops with plenty in hand. A little bit of a smile. It's almost as if he knew he didn't want to be stood up there with Abby, with Abby going, hey, Chris, look at this again. 44. Chris, you require twice, but 40. Yeah, Abby wanted to show him the one he missed. Yeah, that's game shot in the that. board line. Now he Chris levels Mason. up. Chris Mason. Antonio Shea. Inseparable in terms of points. In the table, inseparable Fifth in terms of legs to in this match. First. Something has Game to give on. over the next three. Extremely 100. good on the outer ring from both. Mason, two from two. Tony O'Shea, only that one missed double, but it didn't affect the outcome of that leg. One on the down, 40. Mason going back to the stats that we expect from him, the stats that he has shown at the start of this week so far. 95 running average now. He's warming up. 43. He said at the very, very start, the very first thing on Monday, he said he will get better as things go. Yeah, that Dubbridge defeat was damaging, but not 96. a fatal blow to his chances. Well, he's not won a single opening game. He said he was nervous in those games. His own words, he 55. expected to get better. See what we should have seen earlier on the 265, utilising the 19s. 60. Still in with a chance to break here. Tony O'Shea will utilise the 19s as well. No need to stay there. 86. There's two things happening here, isn't there? Mason's getting better and Tony O'Shea's getting weaker. It's heavily reflected in the averages. When we put them on the screen, there was about an 87 apiece. 96. Mason now on the 93. Tony O'Shea down to 79. One on the end, 35. Only takes Chris a visit to change things. Mason now needing the treble 19 for a dart, a double 16. He gets it. This is a huge dart. 77. Failed to nail. require 82. Expect him to start on the ball here. It's 13. Leaves 69. 19 for the ball. Treble 19 will leave him the sixes. Stay straight, though, Tony. Long way off. 44. This is the Chris opportunity for Mason. 32. This would be great timing to break the throw. Eight. Oh, awkward. 
Awkward. Has to go 24. high. Couldn't find the Do red you bit. Require 38. O'Shea getting away with it there because Mason was certainly the aggressor in this leg. Straight for double 19. No, he split. Six. A double 16. Yeah, and he pulls it off. Line. Tony O'Shea. Tony O'Shea. Bit of a snatch there from Tony. A steal of a leg. And now Mason has to show his steal and win the last two. Otherwise, Game it on. could be curtains for Chris in terms of topping the group. You feel the way the game's starting to pan out that he's going to get more opportunities. 57. When you're scoring your opponent, you'll get three darts at a double like Mason's just had. He hadn't missed a dart at a double till then and then missed four. Missed one at the 109 and then a handful. 85. Double that's worked out quite well for him this week as well. 17 times he's had a throw at that and hit eight. 60. Obviously that stat's going to be coming down to the four darts he just missed. One on the down, 40. He's got to be disappointed, but there is no need for Mason to... Wave the white flag just yet. 100. You would not have expected that after 12 games, Tony O'Shea would be in front of Chris Mason in this group. And you look at the difference One on an in the standard that they've produced over the course of the week. Chris Mason, a running average before today started of 91, the highest in the group. Tony O'Shea, 79.16. Oh, no. The lowest in the group. Sorry, second lowest. The lowest in the active group, shall we say, taking out John Walton. That was a huge 180 from Mason. 26. That's a huge mistake. Chris, you require 104. Chris Mason might have a chance to take this to a deciding leg. He'll be against the throw, but in a deciding leg, anything can happen. Yeah, that's game and shot. That was a six great line. ending Chris to the leg Mason. from Mason. It looked like Tony O'Shea was going to run away with that with a back-to-back -back 140s. And then Chris Mason, 180, and then 104 Seven finish. Takes it's us all Tony the way to throw first. the deciding game leg. On. Tony O'Shea's got the advantage of throw, but we've seen that not be an advantage at times. Yeah, excellent stuff 100. from Mason there. 284 in six starts. Did lose out to Tony O'Shea on Monday, 4-2. It was an early match for him, his first one. But got the better of him yesterday. Uh, thumping towards the back end of the day, a 4-1 success. Again, that 91 average, which is exactly where he is again 60. now. So he's playing to par. This means one big hit from somewhere. 59. One big hit or one big slip from Tony O. He does that quite a bit, 62. hasn't he? He's hit that big one and then recovered it with a treble 20. Because he needs a big hit. To do with another treble. One on the end. Finds another treble. Five. Gives him that slight advantage. Slight advantage will become a big advantage if Tony cannot find 99. Treble. Can Mason make his move? Needs to come downstairs. 44. Just ensured the very minimum after that first start of leaving a finish. One on the M40. Chris, you require 167. Forces Mason's hand. He needs two trebles. He's got one. And only set it up and hope that Tony O'Shea returns Tony to the you missing double form 40. that he's shown the rest of the week. Tops for Tony. Too high. Too low. Two tens. 20. Two tenths, perhaps. Chris, you require 68. He's not had much luck this week. Can he make the most of this? Two fours for two points. It's a good lie. 64. Oh, he's had these opportunities. He's had two darts. 
Well, Tony missed twice. Tony, you require 20. Three match starts missed by Tony O'Shea. And that one is right on the wire. Could be a help, could be a hindrance. He's stepping across to try and use it. Well, we're in Portsmouth. He's throwing from Southampton. No and he's failed to find. Chris, and it is a reprieve for Chris four. Mason. His luck was out on Monday. He made his own luck on Tuesday. Maybe his luck is in on Wednesday. Now he's throwing from the same spot. Two. Real tungsten tension at the Two end of this tussle. 20. Game shot. And Tony O'Shea Tony gets O'Shea. it done. And that probably now means that Chris Mason will be playing on Thursday and Friday. Despite the superior average once again, he goes down to Tony O'Shea who played to par in that match, an average just shy of 79. Missed opportunities they both did in a really tense and dramatic end to the darting duel. But it is a duel that is won by Silverback, who leapfrogs Chris Mason in the league table and puts himself in the picture for a first-place finish. Who would have thought that? The two men ahead of him are about to do battle after the break as Wes Newton meets the league leader Mark Dubridge. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Tony O'Shea has just edged a nervy last leg decider to get the better of Chris Mason and you'd think end Mace's chances of finishing top of Group A. We questioned how Mace would respond to that dip in performance levels in his first match of the day and he did show that same resilience, grit and bounce back ability that he's shown in the middle of games all week really, growing into that game impressively but plenty of ebbs and flows in that match. A 104 from Mace, the highest checkout in that match. That was to force the last leg decider but plenty of nervy darts from both. Both missing match darts in that last leg decider. It was Tony O'Shea who managed to 
get the job done in that one. We can see what that does to the league standings. As I said, it probably ends Mace's chances of top in the group, so it's likely that he's going to be battling it out for a place in Group B, and it's Dudbridge who leads the way still on 18 points. He could move on to 20 with a win here and really start to pull away from the chasing pack. He takes on second place, Wes Newton, in this one. It really is a top-of-the-table tussle in our next match. And we've already seen a ton-plus outshot from Wes Newton today. We're going to see it there as if by magic, that 1-1-6 to take a, a real grip on that match with Gary Robson. He went on to win that one, of course, 4-1. That was the opening game of the day. So then, to get into this one, it is back over to Murph and Matt. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, really significant clash now. A meeting right at the top of the table. And it's not panning out as maybe we expected it to. The suggestion at the start of the day was that it might be a race between Chris Mason and this man, Mark Dudbridge. But when Dudbridge got the better of Mason, that maybe started to change. Wes Newton already with two wins under his belt. And then that defeat by Tony O'Shea for Chris Mason, meaning that he is effectively ruled out of the running now to top the group. Newton can go level on points with Dubbridge on 18 if he gets the win. But if Dubbridge wins, then it first will be a big, big first gap to bridge on. for O'Shea and indeed for Newton. Which way will it go? I would say, Matt, that maybe based on what we've seen so far 44. today, Wes Newton has looked the most likely. Said to Abby, didn't I, when we were up on the balcony not long ago, that Mark Dudbridge has looked vulnerable. He's had to rely on just stumbling 85. over the line at times. And when he has stumbled over the line, he's looked very relieved. It's not the sign of somebody who is on top of the table. 99. Depending on the scoreline in this one, he might not be top of the table because Wes can get a 4-1 victory here. 31. He will take the top position. And we have seen, I think, 40. evidence of nerves from some of those in the mix. I don't think we've really seen that too much from Wes Newton. His opening couple of matches. I think there was a, a couple of off legs, weren't there, against John Walton? But certainly very authoritative against Harry Robson earlier on. Dudbridge looked a relieved man to win 100. each of his matches. 4 2 against Mason, 4 3 against Robson. Did face a match dart as well against Gary Robson. Robson just coming 100. under that bottom wire of the tops. Yeah, and Mark Dubridge is very aware of his frailties on the outer ring. In the pre-match interview he gave before that first game, he said, if, if I could hit a double, I'd have had some big averages. So it's Mark obviously on his mind. Sixty. Forty five. Mark you require one hundred. Just for a break of throw. Yeah, that's game shot in the first leg. Mark that break. That'll make him feel a lot better, taking out a hundred finish there. But we say about his frailties on the doubles. He's actually been taking out quite a lot of Second these leg, shots. Second leg, it's Marcus first. Game on. A tumbler shot in a combination shot, or we stand watching him miss three darts in hand. Yeah, good point. 96. At four before today, Mark Dubridge. Three-figure out shots. 16. He also took out 102 against Gary Robson, so that's his sixth in this group. 114. Capped off with a 160. 
which we saw in the very first game on Monday morning. 43. Well, this could be a result that sees him pull away and maybe put the the distance that is too 60. far. And it's been a funny one because he's topped the group from day one, Mark Dubbridge. But a lot of the conversation is about being about those in the chasing pack. 83. Particularly Chris Mason, who you would say the chase is over. Crazy to think, but actually a possibility. 96. Chris Mason could be in Group C, which would be our highest performer of the week in terms of numbers and stats and data and pretty much everything we've got. Be playing in 44. Tomorrow morning. Mark, you require well, he could finish as many as 12 points behind Mark Dubridge. Would be remarkable. Double top. 89. Suddenly it's Newton who's looking frail. Has not turned up at all for this one. 60. Both of his games Mark, you so require today, 20. But it was with an 80.16 and an 81.02. So... Average is about 80 and a half for the day before this one, which would really... Yeah, that's game show than the average. second leg. Mark Dudbridge. Has Mark Dudbridge run into the right performance at the right time so far today? Because Mason was off colour at the start of his match against him. Third leg is Wester's throw Now where's first. Newton's following suit? Well, if you think about the experience under recent pressure, Mark Dudbridge has already had two games where he's been severely under the cosh. Wes Newton's coming into 83. this game knowing he could go top of the table. Or he's also knowing that actually if he loses this with just two games left, he's going to be cutting himself adrift by four points. So it's going to start coming 100. down to legs. If Dudbridge can get a big leg win here, I think it's safe to say Mark Dudbridge is going to be taking this group. 100. Yeah, he'll be four ahead of Newton. He would be six ahead of O'Shea. 60. And then eight ahead of Chris Mason, who would have three games left to play, so therefore officially could not top the group. Fifty-five. Really, it's like, again, everybody wanting a certain player to win. Even Chris Mason and Tony O'Shea were closer to Wes Newton than they are to Mark Dudbridge. Want Newton to win because this is a one man group. If this was a group C, they might be happy for Mark Dudbridge to win and all fight it out for second place. Yeah, that group C ambience is very much you want one player, whoever's at top, just let them run away with it. It's fine. Priority is getting through 80. to Saturday. West, you require 164. That's where the £5,000 prize is. That's where the ticket to Champions Week is. Your ticket to Saturday night this week or next week at Champions Week is available from TV, And you will be charged absolutely nothing to watch some excellent Arrows Aces in this purpose-built venue 14. in Portsmouth. Dartshop.tv. Get yourself here Saturday night for a... A bit of a different darting experience. Well, that's not the experience that Wes Newton wanted. That did seem to come off the wire. I don't think it had anything to do with the bounce outs he was suffering in the first game. But when it happens a lot, you start to think that you've upset one of the darting gods. 32. Yeah, especially with the angle he's done. Mark, you wide, require 125. Just sits a little deeper. It's more prone to a bounce out in that area. Would have been a salt in the wound shot had Dubbridge managed to take it out, but Newton will get the chance nine. to clean up 93 West to half the deficit 93. in this match. A match that's been tough going for Wes so far. May go double 19 here. 57. Mark, you require 16. This is for 3 0 and a double break. 50. No score. 
West Shirley Cryer, double 36. legs at the moment as well, isn't it? Every time Dubbridge takes a leg here, he adds one to his column and takes one away from Newton's column. Yeah, that's so game short on the third leg. Yeah, West absolutely. Newton. Really important stuff. A roll of the eyes from Wes Newton. Probably doesn't even feel like his performance level in this game so far. Merits Ford a leg like Mark against Atoe Mark first. Dubridge. Game on. But when he's only one behind, anything can happen. Things can change here. Dubridge himself is not at the peak of his powers. In fact, for once, he hasn't it. A single maximum in the match. 180. Only hit one maximum in this match, Mark Dubridge. 97. He's on the nine. He's on. He's off. One on the end. Most 14. important thing, though, for Dubridge is the points. I passed him when I was going upstairs. He just had that bit of a nail biter, didn't he? Where he just stumbled over the line against Gary Robson and just said to me as I went past, two points. That's experience. 45. You forget the performance, it's all about the points. Yeah, points make prizes here at the Moda Super Seas, and it looks like 100. Mark Dubridge will be taking the top prize by taking top place and bagging himself a couple of days off before reappearing on Saturday at finals night for the chance to seal 96. the last available place at Champions Week. Not to mention the rather pleasant £5,000 check that goes along 40. with it. Yeah, that's game short and the fourth leg. That puts Mark him one page. leg away from the match and one leg away from being very Fifth strong is to win this first group. Game on. Yeah, if you look at the league table, if Dubridge does get over the line 16. in this match, he will be four points ahead of Wes Newton. Newton would only have two games left to play. He'd be six points ahead of Tony O'Shea, who would only have three games left to play. So you're relying 58. on a complete comp capitulation from Mark Dubridge from that point. And a perfect end to the day for one of those players. That's just to get level. 100. Came into this group third favourite behind Tony O'Shea and Wes Newton. Chris Mason really put himself into contention for that. He opened the day as second favourite behind Mark Dudbridge. He moved himself into favouritism and right now is justifying that position. One on the end, right 20. Now could be about to land for anyone who followed that. Newton just making a nuisance of himself, trying to hang 46. around a little longer. Maybe do a little less damage to the legs, different column. Mentioned the points difference. If Mark Dubridge wins this game, say 4-2, which is the most likely outcome at the moment, he'd then be eight legs ahead of Wes Newton as well. One on the end, 77. West Shirley requires 76. Sixty. We'll return. The bridge back on 198 would need some extra darts. And he's only allowed to throw three. 55. Would West, you require 16. Three. Might not get another three. Yeah, that's game shot. Quite an interesting point you just made. I'm just West interested Newton. if you did have a, a fourth dart and 198, what would be the route? I'd probably just hit the 180 first. And then Six double like it's Marcus throw first. There we go. Game on. Brings you back to the old days of the quadro board. 93. Yeah, you could score 240. 36. Forty-nine. 
one hundred and thirty points of these moments now. Every one of these moments counts. Well, Newton has not played well in this match at all, but he could still bring a surprise from behind. Dubridge is still in a good position, but one big visit from Wes Newton can change that. It doesn't look like it's forthcoming. One well, that's a good recovery. He has to be careful here, Mark Dubridge. He's got away with the counting. Maybe one hundred. You, you never know in that situation whether it's a complete miscount or he just backed himself to hit a treble. The last start there for me would have been a nineteen. One three two is a much better finish than one three one. One hundred and seventy four. Mark you require one hundred and thirty one. This is where that nineteen would have been the one three two would have been much more beneficial shot. Would have kept the shot alive for longer. Would have left Wes Newton waiting for longer. Now he gets time 32. to prepare to get ready. Possible 13 dart leg. We said one big visit could change everything. It's three big visits from Wes Newton. One, three, four, one, two, five, uh, one, seven, four. But slide. the biggest of them all is that simple 32 that forces a last leg shootout. Heard a little bang from the practice room next door. Seven I think that was probably in celebration from one or two of the players. On. Who know that Mark Dubridge is still catchable if Newton can win this game. One hundred and eighty. One seven four. One eighty. The last two scoring visits from Wes Newton. In fact, in the last four scoring 58. visits, he's only missed two trebles. Who would have saw that coming? He's been running in an average of sixties for most of this game, and now he can't stop hitting sixties. Got the advantage of throw. 100. The open 180, 100 is all in your hands. Well, a real tungsten turnaround this. Dubridge got ahead at 3 1, and then we saw. Where's Newton just start to. 100. Pepper that treble 20. Well, not just a treble 20. The 19s and 18s came to good use as well. And now. He's potentially three darts away from winning the match. 85. Where should require 121? Doesn't need to go for the ball if he gets the treble. Game. He did go Short for the ball and he and picked the it out. A 1 2 1 finish for Wes Newton, and what a turnaround that was. At one point, or for most of that game, was running in the average of the mid 60s and then found some inspired darts, no more than in that last leg. A 12 darter on throw to wrap that up. That would have forced his opponent into a nine. Very important victory there for Wes Newton. Takes the victory 4-3. Coming up next, John Walton, Chris Mason.
Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where Wes Newton has just come through in a last leg decider to get the better of Mark Dudbridge. There you can see confirmation it was Dudbridge who had the better average in that one. Dudbridge taking out a ton to take the first leg with a break of throw and it was actually Wes who looked the more fragile with his finishing for much of that match. Flash uncharacteristically inconsistent in the scoring phases of that one too many trebleless visits and with that Wes was able to hang on to his coattails before motoring in that last leg decider a sublime 12 dart leg taking out one two one on the bull to prevent Dudbridge from moving clear at the top of the table as you could see four out of nine for him on the doubles in that match we can have a look at the league table then and see what that does as I said it prevents Dudbridge from moving clear at the top of the table and with that Wes Newton draws level with him at the top it is of course Dudbridge with the superior leg difference at the moment the next match sees Chris Mason up against John Walton Mason on 12 points at the moment but he could close that gap it does look as though he's competing for a place in group B at the moment we can see him against Tony O'Shea in his last match of course Mace losing out in that last leg decided to Tony O'Shea both players missing match darts in that one here we can see Mace missing three at double two before Tony finally pinned that winning double to get over the line both had their chances it looked like a really nervy last leg in that one both really understanding the significance of the two points in that match so then it is as I mentioned John Walton against Chris Mason up next let's see whether Chris Mason can get his first win of the day on the board in the company once again of Murph and Matt Thanks, Abby. Just have the feeling of a bit of a, a dead rubber now, this one, although Mason's gone from having no chance, having a small chance of turning things around, but only three games in reality to get ahead of Dudbridge and Newton would be some feat. He's more than capable of winning three games, but I'm not sure that both of them are capable of losing both of their remaining games. That is the problem for Chris Mason. As for John Walton, the tale of the week to him has been getting one win per day. Will it come in this match, there's nothing to suggest that he can get the better of Chris Mason based on how the pair have performed over the week. But on how Mason has performed today, this could be an opportunity for John Walton. Yeah, I don't think... I mentioned this yesterday. Nothing surprises me anymore. And well, just when I thought I'd run out of surprises, I mean, that last game, Wes Newton running around the mid-60s and then rattles off two fantastic legs. First lag is John the throw first. Game on. Well, I'm sure there is a Walton's movie. We're asking for the dart themed films today. Board of the Rings is one that I've got recently. That's pretty good. 100. Tweeters at MSS Darts. Let us know. Swap a one word in the title of a film to make it darts themed. 180. Mad Maximum. Really should watch more films so I could join in with this. 85. Another thing that I'm thinking, if you haven't heard from Paul Nicholson, this would be right up his street. So I'm guessing he's not watching because he doesn't want to see Chris Mason performing like this. And putting pressure on himself. 140. Well, Chris Mason's race is now to get into that Group B where Paul Nicholson will be sat. So I think we're probably all wanting to see that game tomorrow night. Yeah, excellent point. It's probably a race between him and Tony O'Shea, who's just beaten him, of course, a couple of games ago. 140. How much he might be kicking himself for those mismatched darts at the end of it. But what a start. So this one against Walton. 100. Chris Uruguayer, 41. Nine. John Uruguayer, 131. Mason missing a chance, Scott, in 11 there. 
which has matched his best of the week. 11 data, both him and Wes Newton have achieved 41. that. 41, Chris should require 32. Be happy enough with the 13. Or the 14, or the 15, to be precise, as long as it goes in. No score. John, you require 90. Double 16 after the single. It's offered John Walton an opportunity. Another or the treble. Double five. 85. Chris, you require 32. Just missed. Yeah, that's game Just short hits. in the first lap. It's Christmas. a break and throw for Chris Mason. Well, John Walton will not be happy with that double five attempt. Closer to the treble than the double. Second lag, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. Mason opened the last leg very strong. 123. Opens this one very strong. Yeah, it's almost like all the pressure has gone and Mason has now returned to that level. But a 180. One on John Walton could have put some pressure on him in that leg. Still a good start in response from the Yorkshireman. Will we see a break back mountain? One on the round, 25. I can't think of any films that have got like a longer title to them. I keep thinking about the short ones like Armageddon or Click. One on the round, 40. Change. Well, our roving reporter, Phil Bars, has let us know. I mean, he's changed a couple of words, but I'll give him this one. Dart Wars, a new mace. 180. Well, our presenter, Abby Davis, has gone for Rocky Bulboa. You see, you're really lagging behind here. I thought you would be front and centre of this feature. 31. Chris, well, you require I 73. I genuinely only watch, like, 10 movies. Aladdin, Free Guy, Daddy's Home 2. Yeah, that's game short than the second lap. Tell you what. Chris Mason. This is a blockbuster performance from Chris Mason. 2 0 up Third in this lap match. Is John the throw a first. dozen data game there. On. An average of more than 107. That's despite that bust 32 as well. This will be one on the M forty. Kind of bittersweet though for Mace, won't it? Knowing that he's doing it when he is doing it. One hundred and eighty. Well, fans and friends of Chris Mason, it's time to take the screenshot again. This time they don't have to cut the other side off because this is two and a half legs in, and he's got 55. the three one eighties on the board as well. Well, we have to. Get a little bit of cropping going on the other day just to crop out the, the minor details of the amount of legs that he'd played. 45. I see some frustration there. He did mention in his interview with Abby yesterday that he was starting to count darts when he was playing well. He wants to put in a, a big statement. He wants to put in a big 100 notable average. He's still waiting for... First three-figure average in this group. The highest so far, 95.49 in a single match. Come the end of the match. Chris Mason is certainly threatening that here. Sixty-six. Chris, you require 136. He's trying to beat his own record. No, he may, have, may well have John, you hit bigger in county matches, etc. But in terms of actual logged games of darts, Chris Mason's highest average is just 16. over 100. Chris so he could be on for a personal 40. best here, certainly in a, in a televised game. Highest average on TV for Chris Mason, 100.02 at the 2000 World Championship. Yeah, that's game short than the third lag. Chris Mason. Well, he's one leg away from blowing that out of the water. 104.86. Ford lag is Chris in this match. first. Game on. I was still in school when Chris Mason hit that.
That was a famous match as well against Raymond van Barneveld. Brilliant game of darts. 140. Chris Mason beating Barney 3 1. Or going on to lose in the semi finals in a final set. Could have been his year, the year 2021. Who knows? Maybe 2023 could be his year. Year 2000. Great song. Holt. 45. I was thinking of year 3000 for a moment then. I've been busted for my musical taste now. 24. Both absolute bangers. Well, this is a divine darting display. 100. Just a little reminder as well, isn't 81. it? It's likely that he's going to be in Group B or C. It's a reminder to all the other players in whichever group he's in that he might well be the man to beat. And it'll be interesting to see if he is made favourite for whatever group he's put in now because of the performances he's produced. Well, he's third favourite now to win the entire week. He was 16-1 to 1 at the start just to win this group. And he's 116 points away 95. from recording Bridget the first three-figure average. Of this week, you would think that Chris Mason kind of deserves to have that honour next to his name. Double top to get it. Game and that is the best performance that we've ever Chris seen from Mason. Chris Mason on TV statistically. 22 years on from his previous three-figure average on the telly, Mason has produced a 103.66 in a whitewash over Walton, a real darting demolition job where he only gave his opponent one dart double in the entire match, capped it with that three-figure finish of 116, and Chris Mason produces something even better than anything we've seen before. It has been really impressive stuff from him. He may be just about out of the race to top the group, but he has shown a superior standard to all of the players in Group A. Can anybody match it? We'll find out over the next few matches here at the Super Series.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Chris Mason has just provided us with our first whitewash victory of this session. A 4-0 win for him over John Walton. As you can see, a 103.66 average for him after back-to-back -back defeats to start the day. He returned to the level and surpassed the level that we came to expect from him on the opening two days. He said he was craving that ton-topping average. Well, he's just got the first one one of the week his best performance on TV as Chris Murphy mentioned a 103.66 outstanding from him so clinical it was four out of 11 on the outer ring but look at that score in three 180s in that match a 116 out shot from him as well getting into an early lead starting really strongly and certainly not letting up from there it does look like he's in a very healthy position to qualify for group B which would mean he'd return turn for Thursday and Friday night sessions in order to progress through to Saturday's finals night. We can have a look now then at the league standings. Of course, it's Dubbridge and Newton leading the way on 18 points. Mason moves up to 14 and goes into third with his superior leg difference over Tony O'Shea. Next up for you, we've got Tony O'Shea in action against Gary Robson. Robson losing to Dubbridge in his last match. He was in a last leg decider, a real sickener for Robson, who missed tops for a 110 before Mark secured the win, as you can see on your screens now. It was a real sickening blow for Robson and for those who were watching on in the practice room because, of course, they would have wanted to have seen Robson come through that one for their own chances of qualifying through Group A. But then it is time for this match. We've got seven more to bring you in our final day of action in Group A. It's Tony O'Shea against Gary Robson in the company, yet again, of Matt and Murph. Yes, let's hope it's a magnificent seven. The final fixtures of Group A for this week. And what a, a group it has been. When you looked at the names on the list at the start of the week, we knew we'd have fun. We knew that we would have interest, but we weren't quite sure what to expect. What we have seen is a superb standard from one player in particular, and it's not the player who's going to win the group. Very unlikely that Chris Mason will do that now, but that 103.66 average is just produced by far the best performance of the week and most of the best performances of the week have come from Mace the Ace. Tony O'Shea though could go back ahead of him if he get, gets a victory over his good friend Gary Robson who first secured a, like it's Gary a relatively first. rare Gino. win against a silverback when the pair met yesterday. So can he get the job done in this one or will O'Shea keep himself in contention? Let's find out. 68. Tony O'Shea has kept himself in contention quite well today, hasn't he? He's had two victories, 4-2 over John 40. Walton, and in traditional style, opened the day quite well. And then 4-3 in his second game over Chris Mason. 96. That was the one that just kept him batting on all aspects, can still win this group. 140. Gonna need some big victories. Gonna need that legs column to really bail him through. Sixty. He's also gonna need to see a victory later on in his game over Mark Dudbridge. That's in three games time. Eighty. And he's got Wes Newton to play as well, which is in two games time. So you'd say that. Tony O'Shea kind of has this in his own hands still. 16. Tony O'Shea to play those players at the top. Chris Mason in the last game will be playing against Wes Newton. We've just seen what Chris Mason is capable 81. of. 81. Yeah, he really was the, the tungsten terminator, wasn't he, Chris Mason, in that last match? And One on Wednesday in Group Tony A Uri is Judgment 16. Day. Double Terminator references. Yeah, that's game shot than the first leg. Tony first leg terminated by Tony. Yeah, if you're wondering why we're doing that, we've asked for a... Second leg, it's Tony to throw first. Game on. Asked for a little bit of fun, viewers to get in touch with 
changing one word in a film to make it into a dark scene film. We don't mind a bit of light-hearted entertainment here at the Super Series. Is this so I don't come out with any more jokes 16. today? We've had quite a few from our production gallery. I have to say, I'm not going to um, bore the viewers with those. 100. One on the land, 34. Sixteen. I hope you are all enjoying the flight club here at Moda Super Series. 45. It's uh, a group which we have really seen the good, the bad and the ugly, isn't it? One hundred. Sort of every game's gone down that theme, really, hasn't it, as well? We've seen some some quality, some not quality, some middle qualities, some amazing scoring, some poor finishing, some Tony world class finishing. 156. Sort of took every single ingredient that you can have in darts, chucked it all into this bowl 81. and just mixed it up for you. Tony O'Shea. Might be on. An incredible run here. 75. 75 points away from doubling his lead. He beat John Walton earlier today. He beat Chris Mason in his last match. He wants double 12. Yeah, he gets double 12. He leads 2 0. This is maybe unexpected. Although, not by me, just saying Third that in the chat on YouTube first. earlier today, I Team said on. to Abby that Tony O'Shea is more than capable of four or five victories. Just reminding Abby of that before the next link. 80. Things are going wrong for Robson, therefore right for O'Shea. 96. I think my favourite ever of those film references is one that has been utilised a few times when watching Martin Schindler. One on the end, 37. He, uh, maybe plants one outside a double and it's Schindler's missed. 83. Oh, Schindler, someone else who's appeared in The Simpsons. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, our... Super Series referee Owen Biggs. One on the M40. Yeah, interesting chat with the referee Marco on that YouTube show 10 minutes before play got underway at the Modus Super Series. Do, if you get a chance, Nine rewind and have a look at that. You might see if our 44. social media team will clip up the interview. I always find it interesting getting the thoughts of people with different jobs in the game. It's usually just the players 29. you hear from, but there is... Many different aspects in making darts work, and the referee is a, a key cog in the darting machine. I would go as far to say that the referees, 68. unlike commentators, are indispensable. 75. It's a job that's so easy to make a mistake, but we very, very rarely see. Fifty-nine, Gary. You require forty. A few mistakes from O'Shea yeah, in this leg. No mistake at all from line. Gary Robson Gary in pinning Robson. tops. Ford like it's Tony to throw first. Game on. One on the end. Forty. Eighty-five. Good standard here from both, really. Gary Robson just under the ninety. Tony O'Shea running around about the ninety-four. Forty-five. Yeah, we saw 
in the start of the day. Players seeming to play under some kind of darting duress, but maybe the shackles are off now that the group One is a little uh, bit more T5. settled. Though Tony O'Shea still does harbour outside chances. If he wins this match, he goes on to 16 points. That's two behind Newton and Dubbridge. With both of them still to play. Tony O'Shea still has an outside chance because he does have it in his own hands in his games. He has Wes Newton on the horizon. He also has Mark Dudbridge on the horizon. One on an M40. Has to get rid of Gary Robson first. Saved himself 95. To do so, don't hit a 180 one here, Gary. This is Tony maybe now becoming an important five. exchange suddenly. Yeah, that's game short and the four and Very important Tony shot. O'Shea. You can see the reaction. Gives him a little hit on the hand. He's hitting the double eight. That is the important shot there. He Fifth takes flag, a three one lead. He's one game leg on. away. From making this very interesting midpoint of the day. Is he making his gallop towards the finish from a couple of fences out here, Tony O'Shea, having just nestled into the pack for the rest of the race? One on the end, very well thrown darts. Six very well thrown darts if you include the Gary Robson. Make that seven. A right smile from Tony. Well, he probably knew what the expression on Gary's face would be, despite looking at the back of his head. Sixteen. Oh, the leg here from Robson with the throw. One eighty, one forty. Eighty-three. Eighty-three. Leaves him ninety-eight after nine. He has gave us a couple of 12 dart legs already. 100. Gary, you require 98. You take this out in two, it will be his best of the week. Could match it. 58. Well, he tees up tops after a dozen. Tony O'Shea will have the darts to try and seal the deal in the next game. Might be. Knocking on the door in this one. Leg. He is. Gary, you require 40. Yeah, that's game short in the fifth Robson flag. Up in 13. Very good leg of darts from Gary Robson. Very good game of darts from both. Six flags. 187 for Gary Robson game with the 180 in the column as well. 95.38 for Tony O'Shea. Double zone. Not a single dart missed so far. Gary Robson, two from two. Tony O'Shea, three from three. That continues. 85. Just a, a race, really, isn't it, in the scoring phase? Mm, absolutely. Really good stuff, including that 95 checkout from Tony O'Shea. 85. Yet to a max yet in the match, Tony, but by far outperforming his best display this week. 100. One on the M40. You know, Shea hasn't managed many of these big hitting legs. It's been more of a, a straight line rather than a wavy one when it comes to the, one on the, the top M35. end. 14 data. He managed his best on Monday and Tuesday. He did it twice. You'd expect... Tony to have registered a visit 99. or a leg in four visits or less by now. He may not need it here. 92 required to seal the deal against Gary 99. Robson. We haven't seen Tony, a single dart missed a double in the entirety of this encounter. And Tony has two Game. and only needs Shot. one. It's flawless match, finishing Tony from the O'Shea. pair of them. Tony O'Shea, four out of four. Gary Robson, two out of two. Tony takes the tie and takes a step closer to the top two in Group A. There you see, well, 
Nobody has got near Chris Mason in terms of standard until this match, really. Both players averaging more than 97. A big part of that down to the flawless finishing in the game. But O'Shea is still in contention to top the group at the end of the day. He still has the top two to play, Wes Newton and Mark Dubridge. Dubridge in action next against the basement boy, John Walton. Good afternoon and welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Tony O'Shea has just got the better of Gary Robson by four legs to two to keep himself in the hunt at the top of group A. As you can see, perfect finishing from both players in that match. It was a 14 dart break of throw from O'Shea to get the first leg on the board. It was a quality battle from the two of them. That 95 in there as well, the highest checkout of the match. Really high quality, both averaging way in excess of 95 in that match. And Tony O'Shea, as I mentioned, we've been talking a lot, haven't we, about his inconsistent levels in the opening two days of play here at the Super Series. But today, he's been playing at a more consistent level, and we're kind of starting to know what to expect from his performances up on the hockey today. We can see what that does to the league table at this stage, and it is Tony O'Shea who keeps himself in with a slim chance of getting through via Group A qualification. But up next, we've got John Walton, the basement boy, as Murph just referred to him as, up against Mark Dudbridge, who's looking to get back to winning ways, having lost to Wes Newton in his last match. It was a 1-2-1 on the ball from Newton to get through that one. But Dudbridge has produced some high finishes himself, hasn't he, already today? As if by magic, we can see his 102 checkout against Gary Robson. That one really turning the tide in his favour in that match. Can we expect more quality finishing in this one then in the company of Matt and Murph? We shall find out. Thanks, Abby. Yes, it is a meeting between the man at the top of the Tungsten Tower, Mark Dubridge, against cellar dweller John Walton, who hasn't won yet today, has won one match on each of the first two days. The win here for Mark Dubridge would be another step towards qualification. A defeat, though, would open the door for 
Wes Newton and maybe even Tony O'Shea who play after this. So there are two players in that practice room right now screaming Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire at the top of their lungs. Can the Sheffield Slinger get the job done, spring a surprise and defeat Dubbridge? Any evidence to suggest that he can? Yes. But I think the evidence of that comes when we look at the dips in performances of Mark Dudbridge and the chances that he has been offered his opponent, especially in those two opening games today. That one against Gary Robson. He could have lost that. Gary Robson missing that match start at tops. And first stumbled like over the line against a very first under par game. Chris Mason in the opener. So it's the reactions as well that doesn't fool you with too much confidence that he is truly believing we saw the interview at the start Nine, of the two, day three. where he was saying he was delighted to be there and feels like an underdog and then the reactions sort of suggest underdog performance and this is a key match for mark dubridge because 59. his final fling will be against tony o'shea who could well still be in the running come the end of the afternoon's action yeah, i don't think you can write tony o off 30. yet because he is playing both the players above him in the table. Wes Newton, that game is coming up next. And then Mark Dudbridge in the last game. Yeah, so if he beats both, he gets on to 20 points, which is all Dudbridge 30. will be on if he wins this one. And it's what Wes could be on if he loses to Tony that beats Chris Mason in the last match. It might be that leg difference separates three players. I expected leg difference to come into play. 58. At the very start. We, I think after game two, I was saying legs... And how they was important. Tony O'Shea could... They're double whammy games, those, because every leg he puts on his column is taking off of the others. 43. Yeah, so, for example, he's currently four legs behind Wes Newton in second place. He's two points behind him as well. But if he beats him in that match, say, 4-2, he'll wipe out both the points 83. and the legs deficit in that game. Six legs behind this man, Mark Dubridge. We will be now not just wanting to win, but wanting to win well. 97. Needs to cash in on the the draw where he's playing. John Walton sat bottom on minus 27. The bridge realistically coming into 81. this table topper will be thinking 4-1 or better. Fifty-seven. Mark, you require one hundred and fifty-six. Can get quite safe when you play a league format and just go two points, but we have seen leg difference bite people. One hundred. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the fixtures that remain, by the way, it means that somebody will definitely get to twenty points, at least one player. So we won't be seeing Chris Mason qualifying top spot from this group, Mark despite you require 56. being the best player in it uh, in terms of the stats. But it's not about stats. How many times has Mace said they don't put averages on trophies? Yeah, that's game short than the first It might be Mark, Mark Dubridge that takes that top spot. He's taken the first leg here against John Walton. Second leg is John the throw first. Game on. 87. One hundred and twenty-one. There will be a massive Tony O'Shea fan in that next game because that would pretty much seal it. One hundred and eighty. But that is if he gets the big win. Needs to be clear on the legs. Eighty-four. Yeah, so John Walton. That one has come out of nowhere hasn't it look no 100s no 140s but a 180 93 he's threatened to give us a bit of proper counting there for the first time bullseye would have been the 45. safer option with the John last John you start. require 141 25 would have still left him a finish Play the odds. 81. At the moment, he's playing the odd good leg, isn't he, John Walton? And that is why 
He's only managed to get a couple of wins under his belt so far. Don't really see any One on own 40, John any good arguments in getting through Group C either, based on what we've witnessed so far. But we did say he could be a spoiler in this group, a party pooper. He's looking yeah, to spoil that's Mark Dunbridge's party line. here John as he reaches parity in this match at one apiece. That matches his best leg of the week so far, a 15 data. Third leg is Mark to throw Four first. 15 data from Game him on. on Tuesday. Just see him in the background there, flexing that shoulder once again. Uh, a problem he's been playing through. 83. One hundred. Did say I was new asked. Could we see anything from John Walton here? I says potentially yes on the Dudbridge dips. But if John Walton can keep this going, 100. he might start carving out some opportunities of his own. We were showing him in his first couple of matches today, didn't we? Have more darts at double than he'd been getting in previous games. One on the M40. Well, that suggests that he's had an increase in the scoring department. And I think we had seen, had seen a dip 92. from those players in contention at the top as well, particularly Mark Dubridge, despite still managing to win two of his first three matches. But how pivotal does that defeat to Wes Newton start to look if it goes wrong for Mark Dubridge from here? Well, we've got a movie theme going. One hundred and thirty-four. John Newley Grimes, one hundred and sixty-one. Mark Dudbridge, John Walton, is starting to find ball for a one-six-one. One hundred and, and thirty-six. That is a very well-thrown dart. Yeah, that whistled past the wire. The ring of that yeah, bullseye, but that is line. top draw Mark from Dubbridge in response. He would have suffered a scare there as he saw that dart brush with the bull. Forward like but Dubbridge edges ahead Game with a very on. clinical kill of his own. That would have been for a 12 dart leg if that bullseye went in. It would have been his best finish of the week. It would have been his best leg of the week. And he's continuing that going 21. here. Spider-Man's the board. The last dart. We'll be happy enough with the one, two, one. Forty-two. My eyes are glued to this this league table. I'm sure Tony O'Shea's in particular are as well. Really wants a defeat for Dubbridge here, and it really is in his hands. 100. Then he plays Wes Newton next. Both of those players. Want Walton to win and will be very, very encouraged by the performance level that John is producing so far. 60. It is as good as anything we've seen from him this week. Well, the best we saw was that 86 average, really, in the last game. And we can put that down to Chris Mason, 81. really, can't we? The 103.66 for Chris Mason meant that John Walton's average was just a scoring average. This yep. one much more competitive. One dart a double he had one on in the game, 40. that's it. But then we saw in the next match, Tony O'Shea and Gary Robson have six darts at double between them. That's all it took in six 45. legs. And he's looking good for holding on to his throw again here. 57, John Uruguay, 154. John Walton gets close or takes a leg. His legs at Mark Dudbridge is not getting, which keeps the group alive for longer. Seems an odd choice from Dudbridge there to go for the treble. 18. 84. With his last dart. Would not have left a finish had he found it. Forty-five. John, you require seventy. Take your pick. You go tens for tops or eighteens. One for the tens. So that's twenty for tops. Tops for a level game. Yeah, that's game Great short. And the four John Walton. John Walton. Double strong again in this one. 
Dunbridge two from two, John Walton two from four. And that's why we've got a little game here. Marked two apiece, Mark Dunbridge game to throw on. first. Yeah, I'm not a betting man myself, but I can't imagine there would have been many punters going for John Walton most 42. maximums in this match. Dubridge has lost his range on the treble 20, and that has been the thing that has bailed him out so much. He's bought himself more opportunities at the 45. end of legs. Great point. And we had two darts at double. So all he's needed so far. Two from two, hundred percent. Like I say, he's losing one hundred and twenty-three range or that consistency around the treble twenty. While well, John's starting to find it more than he has all week. Fifty-five. Range may be recovered. Ninety-five. That was a bit of a bounce off. The dart in the bed there. But he's still in, in charge at the moment, Mark Dubbridge. Big fan of this side shot. 60. Love that shot. Get to see the the action and the balance of the players. See Dubbridge coming slightly behind the balance line there. 125. Cause him to have a bit of lift. Gives him that upward angle on the dart. Everyone's got different reasons for why the darts are in certain Mark angles. Mark Dubrovsky, 116. Well, this performance is kind of the reverse of everything we've seen from Mark Dubridge so far this week. No maximums, but no darts missed at uh, double, that's game and it carries on fifth line. with 116 checkout to lead 3-2 and move within one of pulling two clear at the top once more. It's as if Six like is John the throw first. Back into the practice game room. on. Thought I'm going to listen to what the commentators are saying about me and go, oh, they're saying I'm missing my doubles, am I? I'll sort that out. But you forgot to keep the 180s going. 59. But what is it about the kind of yin and yang in darts that players seem to be able to correct one part of the game, but then the other part of the game goes missing? It's very rare that one on you step 14. up there and the trebles and the doubles are going as well as you'd like. There's often a domino effect, isn't there, with things and... I suppose it's that glass half full, glass half empty approach, isn't it? You know, you you focus on what you'll always find some flaw in your game unless you're hitting a nine data every time. There's always something to be changed. Yeah, it's a game one hundred and twenty-one. You kind of miss more than you hit. It must be a it's a very frustrating sport to be a part of, isn't it? You have even seen players, Peter Wright, the obvious example, who's 16. changed equipment to try and improve the scoring segment, but then that's had an effect on the doubles. That, I actually don't think it'll be long before probably Peter or somebody else starts throwing 81. different sets of darts at trebles and doubles. Darts is a game that you can't really recover it in other areas. You know, if you're not as technically sound as another football team, you can make up for that with extra 45. running, extra miles, putting in the extra work. With this, you can't recover it in any other sort of physical aspect. Yeah, it's pure, isn't it? You can't block them either. Even in other sports that are individuals, say snooker, there are different aspects of your game that you can make it more difficult for them. 99. But in this game, it's just you against them. The best man wins. So we need to see some psych outs like in basketball. We're going to get people watching it before the end of the week. 44. Mark, you require 60. Some sort of commission for this film. There might be another step towards... Top billing 20. for Mark Dubbridge. He'll be back. He will be back for 40, and that will move him to 20 points. He can wrap this one up. One on the down, 40. The Mark, you require 40. Neck. Game. In it goes. Shot. And, and Mark, match. Dubridge Mark Dubridge leads outright once again. Two points clear of Wes Newton in second. Four points clear against Tony O'Shea in third. That pair are going to do battle next, but there you see the tail of the tape. Good finishing from Mark Dubridge in that match, but his 180s dried up and disappeared. And that 1-180 one, one for John Walton, well, that might have bust a few coupons and broke a few hearts with Dubridge not hitting any maximums in the game, but he did hit 116 checkout.
and the crucial double top to win the game. So he moves top. Newton can join him on 20. Or Tony O'Shea can stay in the race if he can get the better of the Warrior after the break. Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Mark Dudbridge come through the 4-2 winner to move clear at the top of the league standings once more. Matt Edgar, it's roles reversed for Dudbridge though, isn't it? His scoring's really dried up and it's looked like a little bit of a slog at times in that department for him. Too many trebleless visits to the board, but look at that finishing. <laughs> Yeah, he's made it look easy as well, didn't he, at times. That 92 finish, I think, was the real big one because John Walton just missed that 161 at that point. And it was a really well-thrown dart, the 161 as well, wasn't it? He just wired the ball and then Dudbridge just stepped up, treble 20, double 16. No doubt, you know, you could look at that and go, do you go the bullseye route? Do you play it safe? He didn't play it safe. He went aggressively and it paid off. And why is it, you've mentioned it in commentary, that when he's got a combination finish, he can normally hit it? with one visit to the board. But when he's got three in hand, that's where we see him falter. Why is that? We normally see it from more quicker players, don't we? When they sort of just almost rush the yeah. visit or they just can't get like the, the fluency of the area so they can use those darts. And the bridge isn't really the quickest player, so it's a little bit confusing on that side of things. But he certainly prefers a combination finish. And as for John Walton, going into whether it's Group B, it's probably going to be Group C for him tomorrow and Friday. How important is this improved performance level for him going into the final two days? Oh, it gives him hope, doesn't it, for sure. You know, you don't want to be going in there and not done anything. And he's given us little glimmers of John Walton and a few little glimmers of hope for himself, that's for sure. And... You know, there's an extra place in Group C. It, there's only one in this group, so there'll be a little bit more to go for, and it won't be over as quick for him. Absolutely. Let's have a look then at the league table at this point. As we mentioned, Mark Dudbridge has moved two points clear at the top again, and look at that superior leg difference for him as well. Next up, we have Wes Newton against Tony O'Shea. Wes Newton, we've not really talked about him too much, but it was that inconsistency yesterday again today his performance levels haven't been at the top level but he's still grinding out those victories that's probably why we haven't really spoke about him isn't it because we look for the consistency we look for who's hitting that sort of consistent level because that's sort of the clue in terms of what we're going to see and 
Tonio Shea starting to find that sort of level of consistency as well when we look going forward. So this is going to be a really intriguing clash. And whoever loses this is completely out of it. But you sort of feel if Tony wins it, it's going to really favour Mark Dudbridge. Absolutely. I'm going to get you to say it quietly because they are stood just behind us. But who do you think is going to come through this one? Fancy Tony for this one. Excellent. Let's see if he is the Paul the Octopus of the predictors yet again with this one. Murph, back over to you. Thanks, Abby. Yes, I noticed that you asked Matt to say that quietly, but you're quite happy to say loudly that I called John Walton the basement boy in the previous match. Anyway, we'll skim over that, but I'm not talking to you for a week now. Tony O'Shea looking to stay in the race. Needs to beat Wes Newton and then will take on table top of Mark Dubridge in what could be an epic fight back from Silverback. But Wes Newton, the warrior, will want to win this starting duel and make it a straight race between himself and Dubridge. When he might need a favour from O'Shea in the last match of the day, he takes on Chris Mason as well. So it's going to be no easy feat for whoever does come out on top between this tungsten trio fighting it out for that position one. The place at finals night that is the reward for finishing on. there. And the two days rest, which in a group of more senior stars might be more welcome than in some other groups. 60. O'Shea has the darts in this race to four legs. He's come up against Wes Newton, of course, 100. twice before this week. Newton winning the match 4-1 in their first meeting on Monday. And then O'Shea returning the favour and then some by whitewashing Wes here yesterday. Edgar has made his way down to join me. 40. Yeah, I was just saying it could really be some kind of Escaped a victory for O'Shea, couldn't it, if he manages to, to turn this around based on where he was at the start of the day? 100. Yeah, and he's produced at times some of the best stuff this week. I mean, the 97.31 would have been the best of the week if it wasn't for Chris Mason the game before with the 103. 59. Wes Newton, when we talk about people that are offering opportunities, he's literally offering opportunities all day. He has been winning 80.16, 81.02, 79.32. Oh, that is not what you'd expect to be someone on six points for the day. Yeah, both players have won all three of their matches. O'Shea against Walton, 84. Mason and Robson Tony now takes on the top two. What a, a glory charge it would be just picking them off one at a time as he climbs up the table. 60. But the margin of the win could be important for Tony O'Shea if indeed he can get the win Tony because he takes on Mark 56. Dubridge. He's currently eight legs off the pace. So two wins for Tony O'Shea would level him on points with Dubridge. But he has to turn around that deficit. 24. West you require 133. This would turn around the deficit he's had in the scoring phase. He can find another treble. It'd be the 19s. When he gave him a poke at the double. 23. Tony, you require 32. Having one dart the double by missing that big 16 in the last. Yeah, that's game shot and in the first the one dart to wrap Tony up his O'Shea. leg. Takes the lead here. And it, it was interesting actually coming back through. I know it's day three. We probably should have had this conversation a lot sooner than that. But Second leg I finally is got round to just first having game on. 45 seconds to a minute with John Walton, who has fully confirmed literally every suspicion I had with that injury. Oh, injury. I thought you were going to say that 86. he was a, a tight Yorkshireman then. <laughs> A oh, tight shoulder, maybe. Yeah, he said shoulder and um, I said possible nerve. He said there's nerve in the neck. 95. So he's had it for about two months. So confirms the suspicions on that. And we also had suspicions over Robson, which was also confirmed earlier in the week as well. So oh, two injured runners and riders. 60. A few aches and pains here at the Super Series. I was actually just saying as well, before you came down, that maybe uh, two days off in One this particular field is more advantageous than most weeks because we do have a, a group of, let's say, more senior One on the Yeah, you don't, like, 
whoever comes out of this group into group C is going to have done five early mornings. You'd say the the main person who's going to be liable to be able to deal with that would be Chris One Mason. and 37. Used to getting up early. One hundred and thirty-nine. Tony, you require one hundred and thirty-nine. trying to fight for Group B, so he probably wants Wes to win this now. Chris Mason. Bullseye for O'Shea, though. One hundred and four. Wes, you require is seventy-six. And he's now out of the running for top spot after that Dubbridge win against Walton. Fifty-six. Tony, you require twenty-five. To wrap up a breaker throw in. Five visits to the board. Yeah, that's game short and a second line. Tony, Tony O'Shea, O'Shea has started finding the outer ring. And with that, finds a break, a throw. That has put him halfway to Third victory. Like it's Tony if he can throw hold first. his throw here, game on. Tony O'Shea will be wiping out that leg difference between himself and Wes Newton. Yep. 100. Good point and making it more likely that he can wipe out the leg difference between himself and Mark Dubridge as well in their final game of the day, game 13. Because as you've 59. made the point before, when you're playing against someone, it's double legs, isn't it? Because you're getting one in your column and taking one off theirs. Well, it'll flip the legs. Going into this leg, uh, this match, Wes Newton, plus 11, Tony 16. O'Shea plus 7. Well, if Tony O'Shea can win 4-0, he'll go up to plus 11 and he'll take the 4 off of Wes and they'll completely flip in position. And it would mean that 85. he would only need to beat Mark Dubridge by a couple of legs when he might need to beat him by four, for example, if it's a, a tight game 16. here. So it's very, very interesting now. Tony O'Shea, he did say he's one of those players who, when he gets going, he can keep going, and he's got going today. 45. No sign of slowing down, and it's Wes Newton who seems like he's stuck in traffic at the moment. And you know what? It's the first time really all 45. week that I've seen that little bit of bit between the teeth for Tony. He's looking a little bit more like he's in a competition. All these players are used to playing knockout darts, aren't they? 16. And I guess it can be more difficult on a Monday and a Tuesday. But when it comes to Judgment Day on Wednesday, that's when we start to see the players put up more kind of fierce fights. One other and twenty one. Player myself and someone who's played in this, I can a hundred percent vouch for that exact point. One thing we're not used to is having lies, having opportunities, losing and playing again. Ninety three. Tony, you require one hundred and fifteen. It's a weird feeling knowing when you're winning that you're still not really changing too much until this final day. Seventy seven. Well, I think Tony might split this when he comes back. I see that he. Went straight for it on the finish. He was feeling good, but he doesn't want to get himself in a mess here. Tony, you require 38. Yeah, and that is the route he's employed. Double 16. Double 8. 22. Doesn't matter which way West he went about it. He hasn't 100. finished it. And it opens the door for Newton. Remember, every leg matters for Tony O'Shea at this point. We'll get another opportunity. 16. Tony, you require Risky. 16. Really? Van Dyven bowed at it. I don't know that was a 180, though. Eight. Uh, never allowed to forget that, is he? Even with 14. everything he's done since. That particular DVD, always on uh, replay for DVD. But that could West be a significant Newton. moment. Missed opportunities for Tony O'Shea. Six darts a double. Go begging for Ford a 3 0 like lead. And Wes first. Newton breaks the throw. And like you were saying, as much as everything Tony was doing was getting him double legs, that's like two legs lost in this race that could end on leg difference. Twenty-four. I'm sure I just heard some party poppers going off in the other room. I think that'll be Mark Dudbridge. Every time Wes Newton takes a leg. Mark Dudbridge, really. If this 83. goes tight and this goes a close game, pretty much seals it for him, really. Yeah, he wants 4-3 O'Shea, doesn't he? That that would be the best possible outcome. A Newton win, obviously, is not good news for 30. Mark Dubridge because he'd actually be level on points. And it'd still be in Dubridge's hands. 
He plays before Newton plays. And with a better leg difference, he can put it beyond three. Wes Newton. But 4-3 win for Tony O'Shea would leave O'Shea seven legs behind Mark Dubridge before 55. that match, meaning for him to catch him, we'd have to beat him 4-0. There's a 4-3 victory for Tony O'Shea, pretty much. 16. That's Mark Dubridge on the top of the Christmas tree. Yes, I will be dropping in more Christmas references. We are getting to the middle end of October. Well, I think I haven't dropped that one in that you should have some sort of Mark Dubridge fairy on top of your Christmas tree this year. Not again. 103. I'll tell you, O'Shea's disappeared all of a sudden. He was flying at the start of this match, but those half a dozen darts that went begging for the 3 0 lead might have just made Tony think, you know what, I think the race is run. Don't forget, if he loses this yeah, match, still a chance for Mason to leapfrog him. Because he's got a much healthier leg difference than Tony O'Shea. All very, very interesting here. Fifth flag, it's Tony to throw first. Game on. The party poppers are turning into fireworks now from. Mark Dudbridge, he's almost there. Yeah, doesn't he doesn't want Tony to surrender too much here, though, does he? Because Newton level, Newton wins, and suddenly he's level. And it comes down to the last set of matches. Right, I've just cast my eye over to the averages here. The last time I looked at that, Tony O'Shea was around about the 92. Six lost. 20 points off of that average. Yeah, in a couple of legs, and that suggests that he was probably averaging for those couple of legs somewhere in the 60s to have come down that dramatically. 57. Because he's been nowhere near the 60 most of the time. 123. Always happens like that for some reason. West starts turning this round, Mark. Dudbridge is going to be round getting all that sh stringy bits that 16. comes out of the party poppers, be gathering it all back up again. John Walton will be going round thinking the pound coins, trying to pick up the the round bit off the edge. One yeah, on the champagne on ice at the moment for Mark Dudbridge. Tony O'Shea might be about to get his nose back in front, having rediscovered his prowess on the treble segments. One on the M40, Tony, you require This one's 96. in the balance. He'd be well advised to clean this up. Two eights. Yeah, oh, excellent Sean finish from Tony line. O'Shea, Tony who just O'Shea. will not disappear from this race. And you advised him to do it, and he did. Maybe what you should do is just Six go into the practice room before players first. go on and go, Game on. just go in at more treble 20s. Yeah, what I think you should do is hit a 180, then another 180. Then a one four one. Fifty eight in every leg. Seventy seven. Forty five. Fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. So you're one of the uh, the people that enjoys a, a long lead up to Christmas, are you, Edgar? Because Paul Nicholson alongside me was spitting feathers that he saw some Christmas 59. decorations for sale in his local supermarket recently and heard his first Christmas song. Yeah, I think we've got Maybe two or three more weeks, and then I'm really going to start getting ready for it. One other than normally, you see, is with things like the World Championship in December, you have to have your Christmas early, and you have to, otherwise you don't get a chance to enjoy that sort of festive time. Forty. Why not? You're not usually there for long. <laughs> no, I was stuck in the bubble. You see, last <laughs> time, so it's. 
Yeah, true. 43. It is a strange old Christmas being involved in darts, isn't it? It's all the prep and all the time and the build-up and you, you don't feel like you can really get involved with it at that time because you've still got something else to do, which is getting West ready for the biggest game of darts of the year. Well, the next leg could be the biggest in this group. 16. We said that Mark Dubridge would have fancied 4-3 Tony O'Shea. He might be getting an early Christmas present here. 72. West you require 96. 56. Tony O'Shea keep his hopes alive at winning Group B. A, sorry. 110. Going to get a dart. Chooses tops. Game. And now Shot. that and has made things Tony interesting. O'Shea. A huge finish to wrap that one up. 110 finish there for Tony O'Shea. But that, in terms of the table, has just made things a little bit interesting. That two comes off of Wes's column. The two goes on to the column of Tony O'Shea. So they are level on points. They are level on legs. And it will all come down now to the final round of fixtures. But before we get to that, we've got Chris Mason against Gary Robson. Good afternoon and welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Tony O'Shea has just claimed what could be a crucial victory in Group A. It was a 4-2 win for him over Wes Newton in that one. Tony O'Shea, well we were saying prior to that match that he's been more consistent today but just dropping off midway through that match and those errors that were a huge part of his game yesterday reared their heads once more. He was less than 30% on the outer ring yesterday. He has has been more clinical of the course of today. There you can see the 33% on the outer ring, four out of 12 on the finishes for him in that one. As Murph mentioned, every leg is crucial for O'Shea at this point though. So seven missed darts at double 
allowing Newton back into that one and allowing him to get a leg or two on the board could be crucial in terms of the league standing here. We can take a look at the table now. It is, of course, Mark Dudbridge, who is still out in front, leading the way on 20 points. Up next, we've got Chris Mason against Gary Robson. Mason is still pushing for that Group B spot, but it's looking more and more likely that he will finish in Group C, meaning two more early mornings for him. But we are about to see a superb 116 checkout from him that secured the two points against Walton in his last match. We did see him in that one playing with more freedom. Of course, a sublime 103.66 average from him in that match as well. But whatever happens from here on out, I have most definitely had the result of the day because you all heard it. Chris Murphy said he's not speaking to me for at least a week. So let's hope he keeps that up. Lads in commentary, back over to you. Chris Murphy refusing to come on to commentary now. So you've got me for this one. Chris Mason and Gary Robson. No hope really of winning this group, but Group B is still a option for Chris Mason, a very mild option, but that is due to his leg difference. He's been getting quite a few good results when he's played the two players at the bottom end of the table. Quite a few 4 nils and 4-1s. And they wanted to keep that going here against... Gary Robson, he beat Gary Robson 4-0 on the opening day. 4-1 yesterday, so Gary Robson only recording 1 out of 9 against Mason. If Mason keep that up, the leg difference is going to be quite healthy, and he will move himself to 16 points. Group B was something he was saying he would be quite happy with before everything kicked off. We sat in the commentary booth together two weeks ago, and he said, if you can sneak a Group B place, he'd be delighted, I think. The way he's played, he justifies first the place in group First gets it through first. Game on. I wasn't actually uh, refusing to go on comms. Just to just to respond to Abby, actually. But I was 16. doing some number crunching in the meantime. And can confirm that Mark Dubridge is now two legs away from winning the group. So if he gets two legs against 78. Tony O'Shea the next match then he will win the group. Tony O'Shea needs to beat him 4-0. Because... 100. He is five legs behind on legs one. So a 3-0 would still favour Mark Dubridge. But of course, Wes Newman is still 40. in the mix as well. We'll come on to that when O'Shea meets Dubridge in the next game. But the long and short of it is two legs would be enough for Dubridge to top the table. 57. The other side of it is Chris Mason here is still in contention, isn't he, for, for Group B? Yes, definitely. And that's the advantage of winning games by a big scoreline. It's giving the opportunity that you can swamp people if they get on the same points. The leg difference is the first deciding factor. He needs a win here. He'll move on to 16 points. Two behind 16. Tony O'Shea and Wes Newton, but... He would have Wes Newton still to play, a man who he has a better leg difference than. So it will be a simple equation for him 100. if he gets a win here. I don't know about you, but I kind of want to see him in Group B because of Paul Nicholson being in it. It's the, the naughty side 16. of me that wants to see that happen because we will be able to forever remind whoever comes out behind. The story as well, isn't it? We like to see the story. Yeah, that's Game Shard in the first leg. Gary well, maybe Robson. we won't be developing that particular story because Robson has taken the first leg with a inventive way of finishing 103. Second leg, it's Gary to throw Starting first. Treble 17. Actually, makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? You think about where you could miss seconds. around that target, you're going to still give yourself a chance. Whereas if you were going for treble 20, you hit a single one, you can't finish. 40. Sort of an advice that you'd give someone playing in the early phase of their career, would you? Not someone who's fully developed and seasoned. But certainly make an argument for that in terms of... 60. Someone at the beginning phase or who plays locally. 
always leave it options. Give yourself some hope. Well, Mason has still got hope. Robson knows where he's going to finish in the table. That is settled. He will be fifth. John Walton will be sixth. And they play each other in the penultimate game of the day. 135. Could still get as high as 12 points, Gary Robson, and finish just two behind Chris Mason. Which is remarkable when you think that going into this match, there was a disparity 57. between them in leg difference of 30. One hundred and thirty-four. All getting a little bit messy at the top now, isn't it? At the top of the table, it's we're looking at legs now, really over. Gary, you require seventy. That's how the fixtures have sort of fell, haven't they? The fixtures have worked out quite well for things to happen. I don't think it's worked out very well for Wes Newton. Wes Newton's got 36. to play Chris Mason. Chris Mason, the player who's been. Producing the best darts. Well, we now know that Mark Dubridge needs two legs. Do you think that he knows that? Do you think he'll be the kind of person to try and work it out or go and ask? 58. Or do you think he's Gary just thinking, you, you know what, I know 40. if I win them through? Yeah, that, that'll be it. You, you don't look yeah, backwards, that's James you look the second leg. Gary Robson. Legs only matter if you lose. You know, you keep winning and Third it's simple, isn't it? Throw first. But this has Game been a... One. A real crash for Chris. Remember, his average in his last match was the best of the week, 103.66. His best televised average in 22 years. Taking him a couple of legs to get going in this one. But that... Well, his average was that bad after two legs in this game. That, that stuck more than 10 points on it, that one visit. 13. Just going back to that point about legs and things like that... Um, I've gone through Q school successfully, I think three times I think I've done so, and at one point I've might have been overtaken now. One hundred my stats at Q school was the most successful stats in Q school history. So every time it came around someone would do an interview with you about Q school and what it takes to get through there, and the best bit of advice I always 50. give is stop point counting. Because every you go around you hear oh I get this, I got two points, I get a point for that. You only get points for losing. You don't win points. You you win, you get a talk card. Out One other end the they give points to losers. So don't count up. Only look at that table and look at the points afterwards. And that would be the advice here for Mark Dubridge. Yeah, it's... it's One other end, 40. Chris, you require 87. Easy to be tempted into that, isn't it? But being able to just focus on winning the game in front of you, that's all you've got control over. 55. Mason may have just woken up in the nick of time in this match. Being caught napping at the start of it. 58. Chris, you require 32. <laughs> 24. Well, he should have moved there. It was a little bit awkward. If he did come to the left, he would have opened up the bed. Right on that top half, he would have had at least half the bed to go for. Instead, he was... Looking to always try and clatter 57. into 57. Chris should require 8. Double 4 then. Let's try and settle himself down. Double 2. Does not like it. Does move. Doesn't really want to go inside. 4. Coming back for double 1 would have been more of a problem. We have seen a few times Chris Mason throw at double 2 and really block it. His darts don't suit low doubles. Chris, you require four. But with that, I expect him to be aggressive. That's actually okay. Come left and just curl that one yeah, round. Yeah, that's game short and a third lag. Chris that Mason. one to go in. Just comes to a side, gives it the old David Beckham. Straight into the double two. Forward lag. Got a little bit of respect from first. Game on. Robbo as well. One on the end, 35. Often see the big shots respected, but he knew that was a difficult, deft little dart to throw. 42. Sixty. Nine. 
96. I think the best average from Mason in all those years, the 103.66 in victory over John 66. Walton, is enough to make him think about that seniors world title in February. You know what? I actually think that yesterday he would have been thinking 49. about it and today he might be going, you know what? I've not really enjoyed it anymore. That one performance aside, I think we've seen the two sides of 77. what a, a comeback would be. And why many players decide against it because it's a lovely game to play when everything's going your way and you're playing well, but and suddenly 16. you wake up and it's disappeared again. And you can see by the look on his face right now, Chris Mason's not particularly enjoying this performance. There, wake up. He, he didn't even need to go to sleep. It was literally his very last game. He had the 103 average. Yeah. What's happened today is we've seen 84. Gary, you require a high ceiling and a low floor from Chris Mason, where every other day we've seen a really consistent high standard. The positive way 46. of putting it is that that 91 Which average is the Mason B game. 70. And if your B game is around a 91, then never mind the seniors, Mace, get yourself back on the main tour. 36. Gary, you require 32. Yeah, that's game short in the fourth leg. Gary Robson. Robson, someone will be hoping to be in the Seniors World Championship as well come February. Real competitive title that's like looking it's this year. Chris Already, when first you look at the players announced and the players that are coming into the field as well, Mark Dudbridge will be joining that lineup who's topping the table here. It's going to be a really competitive title. 83. One on the fourteen. Right, so only one leg away, Gary Robson, from inflicting a defeat on Chris Mason that will condemn him. One on the for participation 40. in Group C tomorrow morning, avoiding the clash of the commentators, which may have to wait till finals night if it happens at all against Paul Nicholson. Sixteen. You got to think if. Mason does drop into that group C. He's going to be a hot favourite for that. It will be him, 16. Robson, and John Walton from this group. And then Alan Norris, Barry Bates, and Mark Layton. Out of those, 16. I would be picking Norris and Mason to get through. Doesn't agree more. It's a debut at the Super Series 4, the Welshman. Mark Leighton, Barry Bates. 84. Uh, another one of those stars of yesteryear who hasn't really performed in recent times. Barry Bates is one of them. 59. That just Chris, you require 134. Performances of massive stats. Well, there's, a, there's a little argument 94. to say that Mason might be better off in Group C. Look, there's a bigger chance. All the players always want to be in Group B because you've got more chance of getting through than not statistically three out of Chris five. But 40. Andy Jenkins and Rich House and are two very capable players. Yeah, we know that. The We've seen player. it at the Super Chris Series. Mason. And Paul Nicholson, you know, he's a season winner. Mason back in this one. Game Six not over like yet. Gary to throw first. Group C Game not on. confirmed yet. Will be if Robson wins this leg, and that's the way to go about One it. One on the forty. One on the forty. You mentioned Gary Robson does not have a good success. One on the forty threes. So he's going to want to get this wrapped up here, especially considering Mason will have the darts in that last leg. Yeah, and even worse success when he doesn't have the throw. 57. Well, he's looking in good shape. 
85. Eighty one, Gary, you require one hundred and thirty six. Gonna get six darts. One three six to get two more points on the board. Eighty two. Get some positive vibes going into group C. Tomorrow and Friday morning. Same time, around nine thirty AM. Yeah, we'll get one more look at Chris Mason today. He'll take on oh, Wes Newton in the last no, match. He's a rather no, 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 ironic eye roll Gary from the ace 54. as he hits his second max of the match, but feels that the door is about to be closed. Robson has his hand on the handle. 44. But he cannot. Chris, you require 43. Lock up the game. They close the door. This would be like slamming the door in his face. If he takes this one... But that is the one, which means it is shot over. And the look of horror on his 11. face. You can tell Halloween is coming. Gary, you require yeah, Still in 10. shock, Chris Mason, after that. Not only missing the double, but missing the entire segment and allowing Gary Robson another bite. Double five. Oh, that is an absolutely delicious dart. Game. He Short. was never going to miss and from the there. Gary and that Robson. does mean that Chris Mason will join Gary Robson, the man that's just beaten him. In Group C, he'll be back tomorrow morning. He will probably be a hot favourite for the group. But Gary Robson has just reminded him that he can be more than competitive as well. A 103 checkout in there. Four out of eight on the doubles. Five 140s, no 180s. Mason got two of those himself. Both players have one more fixture to fulfil. But now it comes down to the race to see who will take top spot. And it could all be sealed in the next match when Tony O'Shea faces Mark Dubridge. Good afternoon and welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where Gary Robson has just got another two points on the board. A 4-2 victory for him over Chris Mason. Mason not able to reach the heights of his last match. It would have been quite difficult for him to do so, of course. But aside from that 103.66 average in his last match, it has been a fairly underwhelming day for the Mace. 
who we would call in the most consistent over days one and two. A 76.67 average for Mason in that one. Robson above 85. And Mason didn't look to be enjoying himself on the hockey for much of that game, did he? Unable to find that mid-90s level that he was producing so consistently yesterday. Just two out of ten on the outer ring for him. Of course, that big mistake from him was when he was requiring tops and slipped into the one segment. There was a bit of eye-rolling from him in that one. As for Robson, he was 50% on the outer ring with that 103 checkout as well. But things at the top of of the leaderboard could all be settled in this next match. Tony O'Shea needs a 4-0 win to keep his chances alive for Dudbridge. Well, he just needs two legs to book his place in finals night on Saturday evening. That will, of course, move him on to 22 points in the league table. So, Tony O'Shea, how he got his two points in his last match. It was with a superb 1-10 checkout. We can see that here. It was against Wes Newton. Of course, that was a real highlight in this match. His finishing deserted him for many times in that game. 33% checkout success in that match. But that 1-10, as I said, was a real highlight in that match. So into this match we go. Can Mark Dudbridge book his place in finals night? Or will Tony O'Shea have something to say about that? Let's find out and hand back over to our commentary team. Thank you, Abby. Yes, it is time to decide who will progress straight through to finals night, who will have a couple of days to rest up before Saturday's session. And just to add a little bit of depth to what Abby was saying there, it is the simple story for Mark Dubridge that two legs secures his spot. It is known that Tony O'Shea needs four, but there is a little bit of a, a side plot, and that is Wes Newton's situation here. Wes Newton is only still alive if it is 4-0 or 4-1 to Tony O'Shea. And that is because he would possibly lose out on the head-to-head -head between Dubbridge and himself if they ended up tying on every other metric points. First leg luck, difference, it's Tony legs one. That could happen. It could come on. down to that. I mean, we spoke about how the leg difference could be important, but those little battles could turn out to be really important as well. So we'll see how this one goes first before we get even Burton. deeper into that arithmetic dive. But your advice, don't count the points, just get on with winning the matches. And that's what this pair need to think about. One that's what they need to do. Harder maybe for Tony O'Shea, knowing that he cannot two. afford to lose one leg. And that task has become a little bit harder now. Especially when you open with 30 on the opening seven. exchange. I say the advice to Mark Dudbridge is just play this like a normal game of darts. Don't think about trying to get to two legs. Don't make a mini match. Play the match. 78. And only if you lose do you have to worry about the legs and any other outcome. All those outcomes are completely irrelevant if Mark Dudbridge wins. 100. We will know the groups as well for the rest of the week if Dudbridge does indeed go on and win this match or indeed just get those two legs he needs to get through as the winner. It'll be Newton and O'Shea in 81. that scenario going into Group B with Nicholson, Housen and Bates and Mason Robson and Walton already set for Group C tomorrow morning. That will be maybe a frustration 45. to Chris Mason in particular. You feel like he deserved more than he's got, don't you? He's put some really good performances in. Things just timed against him in the wrong places. He had the best average of the week. 103.66. He's got the best running average of the week. He's been involved in the best leg of the week. At 11 dance, both him and Wes Martin Newton have done that. 66. There's not many things... He's not topped. One thing he hasn't topped, though, is the 180s. That's gone to the table top of Mark Dudbridge. 26. He could have just nearly ended Tony, Tony O'Shea's hopes. 132. The 132. This would be a real party piece for Tony O'Shea, and what a way to stay in the race it would be. Oh, he can't find the treble, and now has to rely on Dudbridge not 16. hitting tops. Mark, you require time 14. to get out the marker pen. Tony O'Shea. 
Well, that wasn't ever going to be a help, that first start. And he helped Tony O'Shea big Tony time here. 72. Put the cap back on the 10, Matt, because Tony O'Shea has another opportunity. Still on, 48 remaining. Just checking with the referee, Marco. Who says, yes, Tony. 56. But he won't be saying, yes, that's game shot. No score. I always think that's a sign of a player who's not that confident. Tony, you require six that speed. vertical dart, that straight dart. Well, one's just slightly at the angle. Yeah, that's game short than the first lap. Tony O'Shea has Shea. kept his hopes alive. He gives it a Chris Mason. Sorry for winning the leg. But he's won the leg. He's still in. His Second hopes are still alive. The marker Fofers. pen goes away. Game and on. that leg becomes a game where we write it in red, which is important. Well, he uses five of his nine lives there, Tony O'Shea, because right. Mark Dubridge squandered that many darts at double, a full handful. Now, the bid to break begins. 45. Oh, looking for a 4-0, and you've got the throw. If you can get that, the two holds and the break, you need that one break, and the, the pressure is completely on Mark Dubridge then. 180 is like this. How much pressure do you feel when you know you've got that in the locker and that's a secret weapon to bail you out? We just saw Mark Dubridge, didn't we, in his previous match One against John Walton. That's a su superb response from Tony O'Shea. But we saw him do the opposite of what he'd been doing all week, which was not score very well, but double absolutely brilliantly. Now he seems to have got the scoring back, and the doubles have deserted him in that first leg. One on the M40, Mark Udi Kwan, 81. together for a bit of a run, he could win the week. This run, 11 data. A 12 data. 75. Still, Tony still he misses. Now seven of the nine lives used by Tony O'Shea. He's left himself on quite an awkward double down at the bottom. 100. We may see him split. Mark requires six. Tony leaving himself on 36. Yeah, that's game Straight shot for in it. the second line. Straight in. Mark Dudbridge. And that is all she wrote for Tony O'Shea. I think I just lip-read Tony O'Shea just saying, Third lag, it's Tony oh well, throw first. then. Game so he knew exactly what the scenario was. He knew a 4 0 was required. He now knows that he's going to be back tomorrow evening. It's still a decent rest, isn't it, when you've been getting 100. up every morning to come and play darts? Come back refreshed, rejuvenated, and I think it's going to be a really competitive Group B. You'll be able to shed more light on 59. this than I can. You know, when you get into your older years, getting up early in the morning gets a bit trickier. So I hear. 40. I mean, we don't get the luxury, do we, when we're in the commentary box? It's get up for the morning session, go back to sleep, get back up for the evening session. One hundred and eighty. Doing it again. This is third one eighty so far of this match. But we also know that he's now one leg away. So Wes Newton wants Tony O'Shea to keep the focus here. Mark Dubridge wins this leg or any other leg in this match. He tops the group. 81. And we're seeing a little bit of fierceness from him now, Mark Dubridge. A little bit of aggression, which is not really 100. something we've witnessed much from Flash over the course of the week. Speaking of the course of the week, I'll make that 24, 180 so far this week for Mark Dubridge. 77. He's not really a player as well during his peak that you would really have associated with being a massive 180 hitter. Yeah, it's an excellent return for a week's work, and he's going to get his rewards Mark, you require if he cleans up this 104. May even have six starts to do it. We'll need them. Twenty-two. Well, Tony well, went for the ball there because he knew that hitting a 25 would leave a, a simple single and then give him two darts at double. Now he's got to do it all again. 
38. One of the dangers of going that segment is you go for the ball, 82. you miss the 25 completely, hit, say, a one, and then you need a treble. Does get the 25. Double top to win the group. 62. Tony, you require 104. Where's Newton? will be glued to the screen now after that treble 18. Yeah, that's what game short than a third finish. Ride. Tony O'Shea. Gives himself a pound on the chest. 104 finish for Tony O'Shea. To keep Ford Wes Newton's hopes alive at winning this group game and on. to keep Mark Dudbridge sweating on that tabletop in position, which would see him go direct through to Saturday. 43. And a bit of luck for Wes Newton there with that bounce out of the bullseye. I do love it when we get to this situation in any of the groups where you end up having a game effectively between 22. three players and one of them is not on the stage. Sometimes it's between two players and the one on the stage is almost irrelevant. No, I've been in many of these groups now. You know, I started playing in these in January. 100. And I can tell you that a lot of the time the, player, the, the screen's in the practice room, you can see what's going on and the player that it matters to Often has a very disturbed practice session because they have a watch of it. Some people even cheering it on. And then there are the other players who just 41. won't watch. And the, the Danny Lauby was in a situation earlier in the week and he just spent the whole of the match outside while he waited for the, the desired outcome, which he got. Glenn Durant talks about that one at the Grand Slam 26. when he was on the running track, walking around the running track, I should add. And he was waiting for the result to go in his favour. And again, it did. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe there's something in it. 100. I can give you the opposite of that working. I was looking very comfortable for winning the group. I ended up finishing third. And it went down to a last game. It was Gary Stone against someone. Can't remember. That's how much attention I paid to <laughs> 100. it. And I was in the group, and uh, I said to Beanie, I'm like, oh, let, let's go. We'll go. And he said, oh, but if this happens, I'm like, we'll, we'll just go. We'll leave. And I looked later on, and I was like, right, I'll pack me back. 97. Mark, you require 117. Well, this is for Mark Dubridge to finally end all the conversation, to finally get over the line. He will be back to do so. 57. In things like the Grand Slam groups where you can have a nine-dart shootout at the end, if you're playing first that night, 16. you have to wait till the Mark end of the entire 16. night to throw the nine-dart shootout. Yeah, you don't want to have gone home and missed that. But he's missed that. You sort of feel Dudbridge is aware of this situation. We'll find out if he hits this on the reaction. 14. Tony, you require 130. So knows. Yeah, and if this goes, I think, well... That would have been a reaction to watch from Mark Dubridge. But now he's got his best chance. Three 40. clear darts at double. Mark, you require 20. To seal a place at finals night. Fifteen. He said that was his best chance. Actually, statistically, so probably his worst. 96. He's probably better off with a, a combination finish. A small combination finish. This is a combination finish for Tony O'Shea. Yeah, that's game shot than the fourth line. Tony O'Shea. This is what Mark Dubridge was doing to people earlier on. The 92 finish at a crucial time. He's just received one back, 96. And Tony O'Shea has now got the Tony throw, throw first. which would send game Mark Dudbridge back to the practice room to pull up a chair and watch the TV monitors. Yeah, and that match between Wes Newton and Chris Mason is the last match. So he'd have a prolonged agony 55. as well because Gary Robson and John Walton is sandwiched in between it. I make it six group darts that Mark Dubridge has missed in this game. 45. 13 darts at double in the game, and he's only hit one. This goes back to the form that we saw, but then the 3-180s. This is a, literally a carbon copy of what he was doing 16. yesterday. And how annoyed will Tony O'Shea be that he dropped that leg earlier on when he could have actually got in front of Mark by oh, winning this match 4-0. 25 180s for the week. Four in this game. 
77. So he's still fighting to get that leg that would secure the group. It's actually Wes Newton at the moment who is behind a sofa somewhere well, in the practice 35. room. 35. One hundred and twenty-one. Mark, you require one hundred and forty-one. Six starts from here. Been here before. One hundred and nine. Again, looking at that combo or three in hand, you you almost feel you'd be better off it in the single there and coming back for the combination. But you're always going to want the three darts. Fifty-six. Mark, you require darts. thirty-two. Another three darts, should we say, to get this wrapped up. Yeah, and it is short and finally delight for Dubbridge, who will top Group A. A little congratulation there from Tony O'Shea. Six like it's marked at full first. He knows Demon. that Dubbridge is now through, and Wes Newton, whatever he does in the last match against Chris Mason, is powerless to stop him. So it's Dubbridge who makes it through to finals tonight. O'Shea and Newton that will play in Group B tomorrow evening. The action getting underway from 10. Paul Nicholson also in that group. You'll see another Super Series commentator in action. 43. Chris Mason will join Gary Robson and John Walton in Group C when we return at 9.30 a.m. here on Sporty Stuff TV tomorrow. 97. And it just continues the good news, really, for Mark Dubridge, doesn't it? Recently announced in the World Seniors and now winning Group A. One on an M40. A good couple of weeks it'd be for him if he then goes and wins on Saturday and puts himself into Champions Week. Great opportunity to play and prepare 81. against the very best. Yeah, there is a nice healthy uh, prize fund as well. £41,000 on offer at Champions Week. 85. Almost half of that going to the winner. 1,000 of it is the nine dart prize, so exactly half of the entire tournament prize fund going to the winner. 20,000, 10 for the runner-up. 180! Play for a share of a million pound in fees and prize money now at the Super Series over the course of a year. 99, mark you require 62. Five, 180s in this game for Mark Dudbridge. 26 now is tally for the week. So far. 30. Tony, you require 134. Can O'Shea inflict a defeat on Dudbridge? It would be a victory and defeat at the same time for Mark Dudbridge if it were to happen. But he can tie the match when he comes back with three at double 16. 118. Mark, you require 32. A little bit awkward. No score. Just tried to squeeze it in the corner. Tony, you require Tony 16. O'Shea to end the day with victory. Game. And it Shots is victory and the match. for Tony O'Shea, Tony O'Shea. But it's the ultimate victory for Mark Dubbridge. Tony O'Shea goes level on points, but he's behind on leg difference. And that means that Mark Dubbridge goes through two finals night as a group winner. And it could be after a three-way tie because Wes Newton still has a game to play as well, but cannot catch Mark Dubbridge. There you see the tail of the tape, five 180s for Dubbridge in that match. That has been the key element of his game over the course of the week and a big reason as to why he has topped the pile. But it's O'Shea who gets the win, so it's a win that doesn't really matter because Dubbridge is the man who goes through to finals night. Two games left to play here, Mason against Newton, but first Robson and Walton will do battle after the break.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Mark Dudbridge has become the first player through to finals night. He was defeated 4-2 by Tony O'Shea but just needed two legs to get over the line and he shouted to me from the stage, am I through yet? Have I done enough? And when I told him he had, he just fell to the floor. No, that's not an impact I have on men very often. It was a 78 average from O'Shea in that 4-2 victory. Quite remarkable actually, Mark Dudbridge's stats just just summing up how he's been a lot of this week. Five 180s in that match, but just 10.5% checkout success in that match. That has been an aspect of his game where he's struggled quite a bit this week and something he's going to need to improve for finals night. Of course, he is through, though, to finals night. That is the most important thing. We can get confirmation of that there. He's on 22 points in the league table after his 15 games played. He's got a superior leg difference. Nobody can catch him. Wes Newton is up. Uh, sorry, Wes Newton isn't able to get through now going into our penultimate game of the session it is Gary Robson against John Walton and we can see from Gary Robson a 103 checkout on double 16 in his victory over Chris Mason in his last match of course nothing riding on this one but both players will want a confidence boost in victory going into tomorrow and to get one up on someone who they know they're going to need to face again on Thursday and Friday so to get into this one then it is our penultimate match of the session session in the company of Matt and Merv. Thanks, Abby. Yes, penultimate match of the session, a kind of meaningless match in one way, but Matt, I'm sure you would say that no match is meaningless, and as Abby suggested there, it's a chance for one of the players just to get a little bit over on the other one before they play again tomorrow. Yeah, for sure, yeah. You, as a player, you never want to lose any game, whether there's something riding on it or not. And that's when sometimes I get when people say about like exhibition darts and things and they say like, well, it's, there's nothing riding on it. Yes, there's not a prize money. Sometimes there's a trophy, but above all else, it's a chance to get one up on somebody. And I guarantee you those do come back. You do mention them. Especially when you've got to face somebody again. If you know how to use them to your advantage, there can be massive advantages at times. Well, this pair are, are playing again for the third time this week. Gary Robson. Losing out to John Walton on the opening day. First four like it's Gary to throw first. And then Game getting on. revenge by recording the exact same scoreline in reverse yesterday. One hundred. Walton hasn't got his... Uh, daily win yet today so he's saved it till the end 60 maybe he's saving the best for last which is, is that a film i mean it probably is so the open ultimate match in the, One on the, the commentary box for the week isn't it has been a, a pleasure most of the time Gonna miss the jokes tomorrow, I suppose. Yeah, I haven't had one today, to be honest. All I've had is a severe peer 43. pressure to watch some film called Basketball. You won't know. Uh, you won't be disappointed. One with basketball. And and that's the same for anybody else out here watching. If you're looking for something to do tonight, stick on basketball. Well, we're still friends at the moment, but I might watch that film, and if it's rubbish, then well, that will take. Forty-three. The Gary, you require 143. An excellent addition to our team here at the Super Series, like Chris Mason. Having his 57. cake and eating it, Matt Edgar, playing and commentating on this event. Paul Nicholson joining that party as well. Tomorrow, I'll be joined by Henry Deacon. 100. In commentary. Gary, you require 86. Henry has not watched basketball, so you'll be able to ask him tomorrow and try and get him on the bandwagon of watching basketball. That's true. I'm not sure I will have watched it 17. by tomorrow, but I will pass on your advice. It's a little bit of confusion there. I think there's been a, a miscall, a, a miscommunication between 
the referee and... One on the end, 25. Gary, you require 26. So that's correct. 26 left is correct. Referee has kind of corrected himself yeah, there. Yeah, game short than the first lap. He called more Gary than Robson. 60. Second lag is John the Throw first. Game on. Robson was basically saying, I got it right, wasn't he, too? Or did I get it wrong? Well, whatever. He got it right in the end. 98. Sixteen. I'm going to go there again. For anyone not familiar with basketball, that would be really good for a game like this one. Because what you get is you get the psych out department. So you, when you're taking your shot, your opponent gets 100. to stand in front of you and basically try and put you off. But actually, I don't think that standing in front of your opponent in a game of darts would be the best thing to do. One hundred. Especially if you get a really good psych out, you might end up with a <laughs> dart in the head. Well, we nearly saw that, didn't we, here at the Super Series? Was it last week, Gavin Carlin? Yes, I was on commentary for that one, yes. Nearly pinned his opponent to the board. And there are us commentators saying that you can't do anything to, to harm your opponent in a game. What do we know? Well, we say you can't do anything to affect a game, but sometimes little things happen that do. I remember watching Gerwin Price last week with Nathan Aspinall, and in the middle 84. part of the game, Gerwin Price just started chucking darts at tops. And Nathan Aspinall was on a finish at the time, and he took it out, and he had a bit of a smile to himself, and then Gerwin Price went in and got off straight away. Nathan Aspinall 16. went and John darts. Uniquire, 124. Eight darts are getting off, and you think, was that break in his concentration, Gerwin Price just chucking the darts at tops in the middle of the leg? enough to stop that 44. role he was on. But Kim Hybrex actually did that as well in the European Tour when he beat Michael Van Gerwen recently. He thought he was out of a leg, started throwing at tops to practice his finishing, bizarrely, even more bizarre than doing it at the World Grand Prix. Five, John Van Gerwen Uniquire then missed a 18. load of darts at double and Hybrex took out a big finish on tops. Now John Walton is on top. 16. Gary Uriquire, Gary Robson 46. is on top. And looking to double his advantage in this clash. Yeah, that's game short than the second lag. Gary Robson. Does double of his advantage and he's halfway there. Race to four. Third lag, it's Gary to throw one first. One more game to come after game this on. one. Wes Newton versus Chris Mason. And that will be Group A complete. 45. Yeah, it's a, in a way, in a strange way, a little bit of an anticlimax. It got really exciting, didn't it? And for a group where it's very, very plausible now and almost probable that three players are going to finish on the same amount of points, it's mad that it was set up with two games to spare. And I don't like to point 16. out when I'm right, but I, I was right when Abby asked me who was going to win in the Tony and Shea Wes Newton game, and I was right in the fact that I said to you at the very start even after a couple of games and those big score lines was going in, legs are going to be 100. important. Yeah. The only thing you've been wrong about is the fact that you don't like to point out when you're right. The other thing I'm not wrong about is that basketball is a really good film to watch. Anyone would think I'd bought the rights to basketball and I was... Uh... Anyone would think you were in it. 100. There is a film about darts, isn't there? The, it's a, a kind of documentary film, The House of Flying Arrows, 59. that was filmed over the course of at the end of a season a few years ago, culminating in Gary Anderson's second world championship win. 131. The back of my head's in it. If, I, if that was me, I'd be claiming I was a movie star <laughs> off the back of that. 80. John, you require 70. Well, John Boy looking to try and get into this game. Doesn't want to end the day, does he, on a, a sour note, having lost 30. all five matches. 
Gary, you require 116. We've seen glimpses from him today, haven't we? Just little signs that there's hope for him. But he did confirm all my suspicions. 140. About half an hour ago, John when Uri I managed to grab a 40. quick minute with him. But he is an injured man. Double 10. 20. Gary, you require 20. Looking like a beaten man as well now. Could be in about a couple of darts time. Yeah, that's well, game short in the third line. One away. Gary Robson. Walton having the opportunity there. One more leg. We'll see a whitewash Board win is John the over Walton, Game on. who lost out to Chris Mason 4-0 earlier on today. He's the injured man, but the injured man sometimes is one, on one to be aware of. I remember many years ago, Dennis Smith versus Simon Whitlock at the World Championship, and Simon Whitlock had to set off like 20 minutes early to negotiate the stairs one, and the on walk because... The broken ankle, I believe it was. And when the news broke, the betting got smashed in on Dennis Smith, and Simon Whitlock went up and put 45. an absolute star-studded performance forward, and I think won the game three 0 I think it was. Yeah, I think one of the most underrated players, Simon Whitlock, doesn't get enough credit for what he's achieved in the game. One, one of the best at bouncing back, avoiding the slide, always manages to pull out something to stay in the elite of the game. Takes his opportunities very well. A real great One of the game. 40. There was opportunities recently, didn't we? With Damon Hetter in the World Cup. In the World Cup for Australia. Yeah, and that was almost poetic, wasn't it? Ten years on from that heartbreaking 77. final defeat. Caused by Paul Nicholson. This 104 would be for the match, would be for a 4 Gary, you victory. 104. One of his better averages of the week. Double 16, Gary. 72. John One last chance for Walton. 28. Well, I'm assuming he went for the treble 18 there. Would be the sensible shot. That was right in the middle of the treble one. 83. And this Gary could spell the end. Disastrous day for John Boy Walton. Game shot. It's game and the over. Match. Gary Robson. And the last time we'll see these players in Group A, it's not the last time you're going to see them in general. You're going to see these again tomorrow morning and Friday morning when they both take up in the lineup in Group C. But we're ending their campaign in Group A with a 4-0 victory to Gary Robson. We've got one more game still to come today. That is Wes Newton versus Chris Mason. And that'll be coming up in just a couple of minutes' time.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth, where Gary Robson has just condemned John Walton to his second whitewash defeat of the day. A 4-0 victory for Gary Robson in that one. An 87 average, 1-180 to John Walton's zero. And four out of nine on the outer ring. A really strong way for Robson to end his time in Group A, and that will certainly give him a massive confidence boost heading into Thursday and Friday's action. Of course, he will face Walton again two more times this week, so it's always good to go into those fixtures after a victory like that. And of course, we do know that Mark Dudbridge is our first player through two finals night. We can see the league table now with one more game in Group A remaining. Of course, Dudbridge at the top of the table there. He's unable to be caught at this stage. And it's Wes Newton against Chris Mason up next. Of course, this is the fixture that Chris Mason pinpointed at the start of the week when we spoke to him in our preview show up on the stage. This is the one he said he wanted revenge for. He wanted that victory over Wes Newton. He had opportunities in both of the matches. On Monday, certainly, he had an opportunity to run away with the game. It was his doubles that let him down in that one. He missed 10 at the outer ring in that match. And yesterday, of course, he had the opportunity again, but just couldn't get over the line and that's the one that's really frustrated him this week so can he end group a with that victory over wes newton and go into thursday and friday's action with that boost of getting the better of someone who he certainly wanted to all week let's find out then it is our last match in group a in the company once more of murph and matt yeah, one final fling in this group, and it is remarkable. We were just saying off air to think that at the end of this match, we could have three players tied on 20 points at the top of the group, yet the last two games have been for nothing. Wes Newton is one of those players who could actually end up tied on points, leg difference, and legs won with the league leader Mark Dudbridge, but would miss out on top spot by the virtue of their head-to-head -head record. For Chris Mason, well, it's been a case of what might have been. He's produced some stunning stuff, particularly that 103.66 average earlier today. He came into the final day in a real position to try and take top spot himself, but finds himself six points adrift ahead of this final fixture. And not only has he been ruled out of contention to make it straight first through to finals it's night, but he will be Game in on. Group C tomorrow morning rather than the advantageous Group B tomorrow evening don't expect newton to get that 4 0 win but do feel that maybe he will be a bit more buoyed than mason who i think even though newton's closer to getting top spot will be feeling a little deflated right now yeah, Chris 83 Mason's highlight this at the start of the week doesn't it as one he wants to win and normally that becomes because there's been something in their past where He's cost him a big game, or he's cost him a qualification 59. or something. I just wonder if we can look through the the history, see if we can try and pinpoint where we think that might have been. Yeah, and it's probably become more of a case of one he wants to win because 44. the way that he's lost the games recently. Newton's been a nuisance, hasn't he? Two, four, threes here at the Super Series. Mason actually had a better head-to-head -head record in coming 40. into it. He's lost that now. 3-2, he was up on Wes Newton, but was beaten in the quarterfinals of the 2006 Las Vegas Desert Classic. wonder if that one was one that was particularly sore for Mace. It was in a final set. You've got to think that's the one, because that is uh, that was a TV event. That was for a TV semi-final, and obviously losing up 3-2. Look at the other results. It was a UK Open qualifier, the Vauxhall Autumn Open. The Island Autumn Classic and the Bobby Bourne, they would be all what we'd now call Pro Tour events. 30. West Uri Choir, 146. Before. You tend to forget the little wins or the little losses. They're okay. It's the big ones that lag 46. and hurt. Yeah, it's a 16-year wait for that, for revenge, if it is for that beating in Vegas. Many a good man have been Brought down in Las Vegas, of course. 100. Where should you require 100? Well, Where's Newton got over the line in that one? The tournament was won by John Part. 60. Chris should require 
And then Barney in the final. So maybe Mace thinks that might be the one that got away. Or well, what a shot this would be. 111. Would have nicked West the leg from Newton, 40. but he just hasn't been winning these battles against Wes this week. It's a good lie for, Le for Wes. Les? Wes. We can spell his name with Chris a Z. I can call 36. him Les. Yeah, that's game short in the first leg. Nice. Where's Mason? Is that an apology again? From him? Is Mason pulling up the Masons? <laughs> Tell you what, I'm looking at the um, fixtures that were played in that Second last leg. Second leg, it's Chris's throw first. Nivers can talk game now. On. Les Vegas, Desert, Wesert Classic, or whatever it is. But yeah, a lot of players that were in that that year have played in this. Terry Jenkins, Wes Newton himself, Barry Bates, who we're going to see, he actually played against Mark Dubridge in the first round. Andy Hamilton, Kevin Painter, they played each other. Andy Jenkins. One on the down, 25. Chris Mason, obviously himself. We're giving out our own tongue twisters here, aren't we? Without even trying. Do you know one that always gets me? Go on. Salt one on the down, sachet. 40. Can't say that without having to have a big pause in there. I'll try and find a way to weave it into commentary at some point. Opening the salt sachet ready to rub into the wound. Maybe a line like that. That's your test for next time you're here. You need to deliver that line at the right time. Perfectly. One on the M40. No problems delivering the salt sachet. Right, so it's a combination of words that I've used frequently. 81. Chris, you require 124. Well, we know that Wes Newton won't be tying on every metric with Dudbridge at the top of the table. 92. What we don't know is if he'll get level on points. Fifty-five. Chris, you require thirty-two. We are going to hear from Mark Dudbridge at the end of the yeah, day. That's game short in the second leg. Chris, the end of the day could be. Ever closer because Mace is acing this one. Third lag is Wester throw first. Game on. Matt, I did mention in the previous match you are leaving us, so I want you to leave us with 100. a couple of reflections and a couple of predictions, please. Okay, yeah, I've nailed a few predictions so far this week, haven't I? So let's get some more going. 54. For group C. Maybe Chris Mason or Alan Norris to win the group. So you're saying Chris Mason and Alan Norris to get through the group? Yes. Yeah. Forty-one. Um, group B. Quite fancy Andy Jenkins in that one. And yeah, that will be eighty-one. A really strong group: Jenkins, Nicholson, Howson, Newton, and O'Shea. Three of those will join Mark Dubridge at finals. One night. on the M40. Norris. And Mason may well join them as well from Group C, but it'll be Barry Bates, Mark Layton, Gary Robson, and John Walton with a thing or two to say about that. 100. make full predictions here then so group c is going to be 50 chris mason alan norris group b is going to be andy jenkins paul nicholson one on the end 34 where should you require there you have it. We'll see you on saturday thanks for joining <laughs> us next prediction does wes get this no <laughs> One on the down five. Chris, you require 132. Does Chris get this? He gets close to the 25 <laughs> with the first start, and then he sets it up. Well, you see, Matthew Edgar always there or thereabouts when it comes to predictions. 48. Where she requires 65. Choices here for Newton. Usually 25 would be the target, but the problem going that way is you might hit the ball. And then only get one dart 57. double. 57. Chris, you require and Mason 84. could make it 3 nil if he can take out 84, which may well involve ending on the bullseye. 14 to do just that. Don't miss the big number, Chris. He doesn't. 59. But he does miss the ball. Where should require 8? Yeah, 
Yeah, that's game short in the third leg. West Newton. West Newton will hold a throw there. Keeps this one going. I'm surprised Paul actually you let Chris me to throw first. say Paul game Nicholson on. getting through Group B without further comment there from... Uh, yeah, I don't want to. Um, Sixty-eight. I don't want to put pressure on Paul, so I'm going to say he's got absolutely no chance of getting through. Now, uh, obviously, Paul is a more than capable player, but I think he's well, under no, a little bit more 40. pressure based on what Chris Mason's done because obviously he's played more recently. He's been on the the main tour more recently. He's had a little bit of time off, but. 96. You would expect him to be competitive, a little bit like Mark Webster when he comes here. He's right up there, isn't he? Challenging at the top end of any group that he's in. 100. I would put Paul in a similar bracket, although he's been out of the game a little longer. But it's interesting for all of those players, for you yourself now, the pressure that comes with actually being a commentator and 18. then having to go and do it, it's... It's something that when you walk back in that practice room, having done something wrong or having lost a match, everybody's going to remind you of. Yeah, I'd do exactly the same thing to them as well. Yeah, 81. I, I do like a practice room. That being sly, isn't it? There's, there's, there's two ways of doing it. You get the one person that runs around 99. screaming and shouting. You get the one that just sits there and chucks the odds. Quality over quantity in there. One of my favourite tour stories is 100. one that Chris Mark Webster told me about Dennis Priestley at Pro Tours. And we're talking, you know, 10 years ago. We'll come back to that in a moment because Mason is threatening a finish and Wes Newton is on a more than makeable one. 98. Wes yeah, Newton a, a really 80. good story. We'll come back to it. 60. Okay. Okay. Not 15. okay. Chris, you require 16. Yeah, that's game shot in the fourth leg. Chris Mason. On the end of the day, that would be the end of the group. Yeah, that Dennis Priestley story, Fifth I was told that to throw first. Mark Webster, he used to uh, practice a lot on the Pro Tours and, you know, in between matches, going to the practice board and he always used to see Dennis Priestley just sat on his table. This is 2012-ish, when he was coming to the end of his career, just doing his crossword, his Sudoku or whatever. And Mark had like he'd come back and Priestley had never moved. Every time he'd look, he'd be sat there doing his Sudoku. Mark might win a couple of games, go to the practice board, then lose one and go to the table saying, how did you get on, Dennis? Oh, yeah, I'm playing uh, Michael Van Gogh in the semi-finals next. 60. And it must be so frustrating when you feel like you're putting everything in and you see somewhere, someone there so laid back like that. Well, hang on a minute. One on the M40. What a last leg that could have been. In some way to wrap up Group A, Ryan Searle was the same. Obviously, I shared with him for, for years. And 60. Especially during those sort of like bubble environments and like I had the practice board in the room and I'd be up practicing, getting ready, and then I'd be like, we've got to go down. We're on in like an hour. And it'd just roll out One of bed and have a quick wash and what have you, and they'd be ready to go. Just be laid there playing Mario Kart. Is Chris Mason ready to go for the bull for a 10 data to end Group A? I hope so. Game. And he's got Shot. it. And what a remarkable end Chris to the group Mason. from Chris Mason, who's produced some fireworks and produces the best leg of the group in the last leg of the group by bedding the bullseye for a 10 dart finish. Chris Mason, you cheeky little sausage. What a finish that is. A 4-1 success against Wes Newton for Mace the Ace, who has been one of the big stories of this group, but ultimately will end up playing at the same time tomorrow in Group C. Newton in Group B with Tony O'Shea. The winner of the group is Mark Dudbridge, and I believe he's ready to speak to Abby. He is indeed. We thoroughly enjoyed that finish from Chris Mason there, but I am joined by the player who is through to finals night. Mark, judging by your reaction when I confirmed to you on stage that you'd made it through, I think this even exceeded your expectations for the week. Absolutely. I've, I've, I've gone into that last match. I didn't know whether I needed one leg, two legs. I just didn't know. 
and it affected my game. And obviously, you go into it, try and you just think, well, I'll win it, and, it, and it's all over. But it, it was so tight in the end. It was. Um, I just feel weak at the knees at the moment. And in the context of your year, of your career, how crucial is that to come through a group that is littered with so much experience and so much talent? Well, I didn't have a career. You know, all the, all the, uh, hats off to all the guys in, in, in the practice room that we play with, all multiple winners, very, very good dart players. You know, we have had some fun. We've had some old stories, but believe it or not, very competitive. There's not one player in there that wasn't trying. And um, on the Monday, we all said, let's just not embarrass ourselves, you know? And um, I think, you know, the Monday was okay. You know, we were all a bit finding our feet. I think we all played well on the Tuesday. And I think you could see what it meant to everybody today because it affected all of us. And um, yeah, well, I'm just so happy to be through. And you said you didn't want to disgrace yourself. 27 180, seven ton plus checkouts. It was quite remarkable in that phase of the game, wasn't it for you? Well, yeah, but give me three darts at a double, I've got no chance, I can't hit it. And um, yeah, that was, that was the story of my three days, really. I um, probably could have made it a lot easier for myself um, with my scoring and just finishing was dreadful. But, uh, you know, that's something to work on, I guess. And we can see a confirmed Group A table now, which does show, or it should show, this man. There we go, top of the table, 20 points. It's that by one leg or two legs? Uh, that oh, is one by leg. two, yeah, yeah. So you're 13, well, you by one I leg, two, yeah, I absolutely. Two, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, unbelievable. Tony O'Shea, Wes Newton, Chris Mason, Gary Robson, John Morton, fantastic players. Chris Mason has absolutely <laughs> smashed the board off the wall these last three days and not got the results. And I, and I think, you know, maybe it come down to the little bit Bristol rivalry where he, does, he didn't play as well as he has been playing against me. And oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> and it was those two legs that got you through in the end. But in that final match that you played, how much were you thinking about it? We've just seen the clip of you pinning that double eight. How much were you thinking, this will get me through? I know well, you said- I didn't know. I just didn't know. Is that true? You really uh, no, didn't know? No, I didn't know. Um, I was, we were trying to find out. Chris, the statistician, the commentator, he said, I think you need one leg. And when I got the first leg, well, you know, that's all right. And then, but I still didn't know. And then I got another leg. And I, I was thinking, that's got to be it. But, you know, you can't go into a match thinking about that. You've got to go into a match thinking about winning. And um, it affects me in the last match, really. But I fell over the line, so uh, with it's so, all good. With so much at stake, though, it's probably difficult to not let that impact your game. But we are going to have a little look at the confirmation. You are, of course, through from Group A. We've got the bracket slide that shows Groups B and C here as well. Group B will get underway tomorrow evening. But first up, it is Group C with Alan Norris, Barry Bates, Chris Mason, Gary Robson, John Walton and Mark Layton in there. Of those two groups, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Who do you want to see come through to finals night from those names that you can see up there? Well, Group B, me old mate Jenks, I think um, I'd love to see him win. Absolutely, I love the man. Um, let's have a look at Group C. You got Alan Norris in there, Barry um, Bates. Mason. Yeah? Yeah, Mason deserves it. He deserves to be there and that's, you know, I love him to death. Absolutely, I think everyone here at the Super Series does. This man is going to be here on Saturday night. You could be too if you visit dartshop.tv to get your free tickets and you get a free drink from behind the bar as well. I think we'll all be getting on board with that, won't we? Absolutely. There we go then. We will see you. We'll be back with the start of Group C from 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you there. The Moda Super Series, brought to you in association with Bet365, Betfair, Betfred, Coral, Labrooks, Paddy Power, Unibet and William Hill.